<laughs> That's a classic. Adam Curry, John C. Devora. It's Sunday, March 23rd, 2019. This is your award winning Kibo Nation Media Assassination, episode 1123. This is No Agenda. Celebrating new beginnings and broadcasting live from the capital of the drone, Star State, here in downtown Austin, Tejas, in the Cludio. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from Northern Silicon Valley, where we're not celebrating the Brexit. I'm John C. DeVore. It's Crackpot and Buzzkill in the morning. Well, there's no Brexit to celebrate just yet. Huge protests. Well, no, that was not a protest. It was the People's March. <laughs> it's the People's March. It was not a protest. protest. It's the Put It to the People March. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, that's what they're going to end up doing, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen they're going to be putting it to the people, <laughs> I can assure you. Would you like a report? Well, I have one too, but play yours. As the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, made her usual trip to church on Sunday, the speculation it's anything but business as usual within her cabinet. Several newspapers in the UK say that ministers are plotting a coup against Mrs May to replace her with a caretaker leader. Uh The Times claims the senior Conservative, David Liddington, is the likely choice to replace the PM because he's effectively her deputy. Mr Liddington isn't so sure. I don't, I don't think that I've any wish to take over from the PM. I think is doing a fantastic job. I tell you, <laughs> one thing that uh, working closely with the Prime Minister does is cure you completely of any lingering shred of ambition to want to do that, that task. I have an absolute admiration for the way she's going about it. On Saturday, a huge demonstration was held by people opposed to Brexit. Organisers say more than a million people were there. Campaigners waved European flags and placards called for a second referendum. I have uh, rare audio of uh, one of the speakers at the Put It to the People, which I think... Uh, uh, well, before you do that, I want to <laughs> mention they, they. it's always interesting to me when they say organisers estimate. Oh, yes. You mean as in... A organizers because these signs were good. These signs was was kind of a hybrid. They're trying to do. Um, if you looked at the signs, the put it to the people signs, they look like they were homemade, but they were anything but. They were professional. Yes, and it's really incumbent upon journalists to make the estimate of how many people yeah, themselves, not the organizers, which is Open Britain. Uh, yeah, Open Britain. That's exactly the right name, too. <laughs> you know, so they have a wiki page, Open Britain. They are a pro European Union campaign group set up in the aftermath of the 2016 European Union referendum. Uh, individuals leading this are former ministers Pat, Mc, Pat McFadden of Labour, Norman Lamb, a Liberal Democrat, and conservatives Anna Subri. Nikki Morgan and Dominic Grieve, none of whom I know anything about. Yeah, and we probably won't know anything about him on this show. No. Anyway, next clip, go. Uh, oh, I was going to play a, a quickie here. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, speakers in the crowd. You can only vote for a deal if you let the people vote on it too. The people vote, yeah. That's the only way. That's the only way out of this mess. The way to solve this crisis is to recognise we're all in this together. The way to break the stalemate is for Parliament and the people to come together. The way to reunite our country is to decide on our future together. Uh It's time to say with one voice... Put it to the people. I like the positioning because the way I receive this is, oh, it shouldn't just be parliament. It shouldn't just be the people. It should be everyone together. Kumbaya. Simpatico. Well, the, well, the joke, of course, is that... <laughs> Kiretsu. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Kiretsu. The way, of course, the joke is that they could have just... They voted to leave. They could have just left and gone with WTO rules and become the trading. Well, they can still do that. It's not like yeah, yeah they're that's not going to do the that. Table. No, well, no. But the point is, they could have done it right away, and it might have been more doable then than it is now because you know this argument, you know, because they've come up with these ideas mm-hmm. to well, we just can't do something simple like leave. Can't well, you, do that. Even the the Chancellor of the exec, Exchequer. Isn't that the minister of finance or the 
He's the he's like the secretary. Yeah, secretary of, of the treasury. treasury of the treasury. Um, he had a he, he's all for another referendum. So uh, I'm not sure that there's a majority in Parliament in support of second referendum, but it's a perfectly coherent. Uh, proposition. Many people mm-hmm. will be strongly opposed to it. Not but it's us. A, a coherent uh, proposition, like coherent. and it deserves <laughs> yeah. to be considered along with the other uh, proposals that you've got on the list. Yeah, the interesting use of that word there, coherent. I like it. I'm going to start yeah. using it. It's a very yes. coherent idea. So just just to reiterate, from the moment this Brexit thing cranked up, we knew there would be a do-over. A second referendum, and that. Why do we know that, Adam? That is because it is the EU way. John is when they were voting on the Lisbon Treaty. Oh, I'm sorry, France and Holland, not good enough. You got to do over. Oh, Ireland. Well, let's just vote again to make sure you know exactly what you meant to say, and they just keep doing votes until they get the answer they want. I thought the Ireland one went three votes. <laughs> it's possible. Just keep <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Come on, two out of three. Come on, that ain't bad. One of those guys yeah. just betting. I, I like. Not, okay, okay, two out of three. Uh, five, uh, five out of seven. Come I, on, let's, no, I wait. I like Yuri Geller's uh, open note to uh, to Theresa May. Do you remember Yuri Geller? Oh yeah, the spoon bender. Yes, the spoon, spoon faker. The, well, he's this. In his open letter, he is very clear that the CIA uh, has uh, confirmed his special powers. Uh, he plans to transmit his psychic energy into Theresa May's brain at the very mystical time of 11.11 in the morning and evening every day from a secret location near his home in Israel. I urge... Yeah, what what is he going to tell her? Oh, I urge and plea with the people to think, even if it's for a few seconds, at 11.11 a.m. and 11.11 p.m., to send Theresa May that message to revoke Article 50 and remain in the EU. Energy can be transmitted, energy can be received, and the collective energy of people who want to achieve something is massive. I, that, that's true. Oh, brother. <laughs> um, okay, Ima- I Ima- I imagine freak. everyone would be like, damn, man, all my spoons are bent. Stop that, <laughs> Uri Geller. So... Um... This is becoming the fiasco that we predicted, of course. Mm-hmm. Although I think, I don't know if we kind of predicted it was going to go in this, it was going to be this funny. <laughs> this does go beyond even our wildest dreams. Uh, and one of the things that you've noticed is that these guys are all changing positions and trying to, and they're, they're re-imagining re, uh, what happened in the, to begin with. And, and people that would probably be more on the fence are now really against Brexit. and So you get to hear a lot of funny things, but let's play, I think this is from CBS or PBS, one of the two. Uh, the Brexit March, just the part one, and we'll, this will be the backgrounder on the March and this million people, which looks more like a half a million, but who who's, who's cares? More than a million uh, people, oh, sorry. people rallied in the streets of London Saturday to demand CBS. a second Brexit referendum. It's one of the largest demonstrations in the UK in recent years, and it's the latest effort to halt Britain's departure from the EU, a process that's divided the country. Last Friday, EU leaders agreed to delay Brexit until at least April, as Prime Minister Theresa May scrambles to put together a new deal. CBS News foreign correspondent Jonathan Vigliotti has more from London. It's one of the largest marches in recent UK history. Up to a million people expected to take to the streets today, calling for a second vote on Brexit. It's an unlikely outcome, but crazier things have happened in British politics over the past few years. Oh? Really? Well, what was crazy? About, but <laughs> CBS is all in on letting these guys stay in the EU. Uh, and how, whatever happened, remember when they used to have big protests about the students who were bitching and moaning about their fees yes. and things like that? Uh-huh. And they practiced tea kettling. Ah, the, well, it's not tea kettling, kettling. Kettling. Kettling, yes, where they, they, they push people into an alleyway and then keep them there. Yeah, yeah, but that's that was unorganized. They had no organizers who could tell the the authorities how many people there were. Those were just ruffians. Okay, well, yeah. that's the difference. School then. kids, ruffians. These aren't ruffians. These are organized ruffians. Yeah. Let's go to Brexit March two, and we get to hear some people discussing this now. There is a movement worldwide to dial back globalization, and that's what you're seeing here. I think a lot of support for Brexit wasn't really about the EU. What do we want? Brexit. 
Dialing back, narrowly won, but enacting Brexit has proven disastrous. Fraser Nelson is with conservative magazine The Spectator. Leave campaigners made this seem like it was going to be cut and dry. They sold mm. voters a bag of goods that may be too good to be true. Those who did think it would be easy were being very naive, and they've been shown just how naive they were here. What began as a grand vision of British freedom became a constitutional crisis as Prime Minister Theresa May tried to please both sides of her minority government. A constitutional okay. crisis in a country that doesn't have one? <laughs> That's interesting. So here's the, yeah, this is CBS. So here we are, we start with the guy saying, well, you know, this never was about the EU. What? Oh, it no. It was about globalism. Oh. Hmm. At the beginning of the clip, he says, yeah, there was this anti-globalist thing going on, man. Like, you, you've seen it everywhere. It's let me, let me, let me hear it place. again. Let me hear it again, what he said. There's yeah. a movement worldwide to dial back globalization. And that's what you're seeing here. I think a lot of support for Brexit wasn't really about the EU. Huh. Okay. So this is a new, new switch on the narrative, right? It's maybe to make people who are against Brexit to seem like even more a-holes? I guess, or or just deluded. I have, yeah. no, I have no idea what the, do. I mean, but they're doing this in, on every level. Right. And so the idea is that these guys were just, they were mis, misled. They were stupid. <laughs> it was just a dumb idea. What, who came up with this stupid idea? And it was, so it's, they're demeaning the Brexiters and they're, it's just, it's just a fantastic moment for propaganda, yeah. especially if you like to study it. Yeah. But this idea that it wasn't about the EU, it was about globalization. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's nonsense. That's great. It was about Brussels telling the Brits what to do. It had nothing to do with globalization. That wasn't even in the conversation. Well, the, the, in fact, the only other the thing. The two that, of us. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The two of us are the ones that talk about that more than they did. Yeah, the only the only other thing that the opposition, uh, the, the remainers were talking about is, oh, you just don't like immigrants. I'll take that as one of the reasons, maybe, but not globalism. Yeah, so they've cha they're changing. They're very slowly changing mm. the narrative. Mm. And then the guy from the Spectator is a conservative publication is all on board with, well, it's a bunch of dummies that came with this <laughs> idea. It was stupid. We should have stayed in the EU. We, we needed it. We needed people's vote because this is obvious looking at it in hindsight. And then poor Theresa May was an idiot. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is just becoming, well— from our perspective, it's fantastic. Hilarious. Yeah, fantastic. Of course. Do you, do you see that uh, the couple of Germans that sent uh, uh, 1,500 toilet rolls to the Queen just in case she runs out after Brexit happens? <laughs> yes. The Brits make are, no mistake. The, the, Brits are are the, the Brits are rather this insulted. This is Germany's uh, <laughs> third attempt at taking over the place. And I, I know. Think it's, I know. They, this is the most creative. <laughs> they, they may pull it off this time. Oh, they're, no, they're pulling it off. Yeah. Let's go to clip three. Meanwhile, EU leaders place full blame on the Brexit campaigners who promise so much, but so far have delivered so little. I've been wondering what that special place in hell looks like for those who promoted Brexit without even a sketch of a plan how to carry it safely. And along with the marching here on the streets, an online petition calling on Parliament to scrap Brexit altogether has already amassed more than 4 million votes. The deadline to leave the EU was originally scheduled for March 29th, but in the sign of just how messy things have become, that's been pushed back by at least two weeks. <laughs> now, of course, petitions don't elicit 4 million votes. No, this is an, on, this is an online signature. Yeah. It's no, it's it's not even it's signatures. Online. Yeah, it's not even signatures. It's not even signatures. Yeah, it's like that's the but thing. Somehow, I'm sorry, we're stepping on each other today for some reason. But somehow, CBS has it as it's it's elicited four million votes. Oh yeah, of course. The reason we're stepping on each other, I should have probably told you, I am very sick. Oh, what happened? Uh, well, you know, I, th I think you know, I, I want to stop you here because you are, I've, I've complimented you about this before. Yeah. You are so good <laughs> that I don't, I never, I can never tell you could be on your deathbed. Yeah. Be, hey, I'm Adam Curry. Hey everybody. It's Adam Curry. I'm dead. Now, uh, I, I normally, I wouldn't tell you, but yes, we're stepping on each other. I'm very fuzzy. I think I told you after the last show, 
Uh, Tina had been home all week. You know, she oh, right, the kids. Yeah, she works, works at Ronald McDonald House, which is the house, which is, you know, 30 rooms where families stay, and the kitchen. It's all common area. It's all integrated. So when you have, and they have kids who are in the hospital, and also their siblings are staying at the house. So there's just disease running around everywhere. It's disease. Just disease. Kids. And, you know, Tina's like, oh, hey, and the kids love her, and they like, slobber all over. So it's very hazardous. <laughs> and she, she was down and out for the whole week. And I'm like, yeah, hey, baby, don't worry about it. And, and uh, let's see, it was Friday. A Friday night when I went to bed, I heard you in my head, but I fell asleep, unfortunately. So Saturday morning when I woke up, I tried to OD on the vitamin D. It was too late. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't do it after it that. It was time. too late. And it so, does help a little. Yeah. Yeah. But not enough to make a difference. Yeah. So, so yes, I'm, normally I wouldn't tell you, but I'm a little fuzzy. <clears throat> so. Ah, okay. Well, You'll have to carry the show, Dvorak. <laughs> yeah, well, back <laughs> to the Brexit thing. I was thinking <laughs> about this uh, as I was in bed waking up. You know, it reminds me when you – we used to do this show. You used to live in the UK when we started doing this. Yes. Show. In fact, right around the time of the Lisbon Treaty is when I, about, yeah, around when the time of the voting. to the groove about these guys yeah. and their technique of just keep redoing the vote <laughs> keep until voting. people finally submit. Yes. Very German idea. Uh, submit. Is that a German idea? I just was saying. I, li- <laughs> I like the sound of it. Yes. Sounds very German to me. Uh, so you have... Uh, you, when you were there, you made mention of the, and I was thinking about this because of Christopher Hitchens' brother, whose name I can't remember, but he looks and sounds just like him, saying that this is just the, the, the German Empire reemerging, and I've always kind of taken that to heart, thinking that's probably what this is, and and they're finally getting what they want, which is Europe mm-hmm. and England mm-hmm. and France, and so they can run the place because they think nobody else can do a good job of it, right? And the Brits are just caving. It's just, it's obvious that there's one million people. And if you looked at the, besides the phony signs that looked phonily handmade, they had all these EU flags. And oh, you yeah. know, this is like the people coming up from Guatemala to the United States with Guatemala flags. You know, they don't <laughs> want to become Americans. They just want to make some money. It was, it was well organized. It was very well organized. And this is just the beginning of the end. And but I remember when you were talking about the that England was already just 10, 10 years ago mm-hmm. was in decline as the way you saw it. It was pathetic. All you had, the, the whole culture was just drunk, <laughs> drunk knives, Especially the kids, <laughs> the, kid, the kids have no uh, the family unit has been completely destroyed. Yeah. Kids sleep at each other's homes for days on end. And it's like, ah, oh, just, you know, and they just, or they sleep outside rough. No, it is. It's incomplete. When I was there, and now this is, now we're talking 10 it's years ago. It's got to be worse now. Go on. It must be. It must be. And, and, and knife crime and all, it's in the cities in particular. But then up uh, further up north, there's a whole other, there's huge racial tensions everywhere. Yeah, it's in, yeah. it's and and the and the true Brit, like I have many friends, true British gentlemen, have just become racist, true British gentlemen, <laughs> but extremely racist. So yeah, I I think it's uh, I think yeah. So they're ripe for this, and then when I, we went to the last uh, couple of years, or I guess a year and a half ago to uh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, you go into all these pubs, which are now become part of two major corporations. So this characteristics of a pub have changed. That, which is yes, really, you are absolutely right. And that makes a difference. And uh, and then you, you talk to the pub women that are behind the bar there. They're all from Poland because they're yeah. the ones that either will do this work for those yes. that money or who knows what. Yeah. And, and it's the whole thing is just like, uh, I mean, it's remnants and vestiges, but it's just gone downhill and there's been nothing to prevent it and now the more recent thing were cambridge and, and, and hold on before you continue if i may be so bold to say since i was there from 2000 what was i there like 2003 i think of four around four maybe i without a doubt in my mind immigration poor immigration policy is what ruined the culture yeah could be no, I mean the, the the Brits will tell you. We we even had David Cameron say, "Well, 
Yeah, the multicultural society that we planned failed. And I was there when it was failing. It's, you know, it's not a great immigration country. It's an island. It's small. And so yes, that's it's, a, it's a small island. That's where the troubles came from. And you have uh, this more recent situation with Cambridge, uh, you know, disinviting Jordan Peterson. Oh, yes. <laughs> from coming over and being a fellow for a year. Well, giving- well, wait a minute. Wasn't his book banned after the Muslim mosque massacre in Christ Church? I don't know that, but yeah. it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. What book? The good, How to Be a Good Person? Yes. Yeah, the 12, the 12 rules. That? Uh, it's telling you this was banned. Yeah, you, know, you can look it up. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, Peterson. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, Peterson book banned in New Zealand. I'm telling you. Uh, here, church, you cr- up, Christ will... Church shooting. Uh, Jordan Peterson's popular 12 rules book banned by New Zealand. Ba- banned by New Zealand. The whole country banned. And meanwhile, Why? because because Mein Kampf doesn't want the competition, which is still being sold, obviously. A national mm-hmm. chain of bookstores in New Zealand has pulled copies of Jordan. Well, so I, I don't think it's a gov- it's innocuous. It's not a government. It's not a government okay. mandate. Well, the, no. the, beside the point, the New Zealanders are nuts. And that book is innocuous. And Jordan Peterson is innocuous. I mean, he might like to think he's some sort of a radical or a troublemaker. He's not. He is just a professor that has a lot of – uses logic to make points that people don't want to The people hear. don't like. The people don't like. Well, they don't like, but why? It's, it's, if, from our perspective, I don't know if I, you're, I can't speak for you necessarily, but I have listened to a lot of this stuff, and it's fascinating. It's innocuous. It's interesting. It's not radical. He's not calling for armed revolution. There's uh, plenty of people that are doing very radical speaking. No, this is this, uh, no. In fact, I'll tell you, here's one. Uh, this guy is named uh, John Powell. He's mm-hmm. a professor at Cal at the uh, at the law, uh, whatever Bol- Bolt or whatever the law school is. And so he's uh, at a free speech. This was a year ago. He's at a free speech discussion, and he has these arguments about free speech, uh, about why you know f- certain kinds of speech should be banned and not tolerated. And it's pretty much the I don't have any of those talking points, which I can elucidate. They're very simple. Um, But he starts off his speech in a very, to me, a very, uh, I think this is what's going on in most of these schools. And I think this is what might be going on at Cambridge because they don't want to hear Jordan Peterson. And uh, and it stems from this opening statement Um, that that Paul makes. A couple of backgrounds. So uh, I was at the ACLU, the legal director of the ACLU, for a number of years. I think that's where Erwin and I first met. Uh, so I care deeply about these issues, but I've also written about these issues and think about them a lot. Um, and um, I want to pick up on some of the threads that people have talked about. And uh, first of all, I think the country is in a very incredible place. And I think um, in some ways, I, I really applaud this effort to have this conversation over the year. But I don't think this is a defining issue in the country. I think the defining issue in the country is the question of white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it gets, it gets swept under the rug. Uh, if you, there's a, a new article out hmm. in the Atlantic about Trump being the first white president. Um, and this is important. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Trump apparently is the first white president, uh, according to this guy's read of the Atlantic article that I don't even know about. He says the defining issue. Now, I want to deconstruct just the way this guy talks like this all the time. He's a lawyer. He's a black lawyer with a big beard. And uh, he says the defining issue is the question of white supremacy. Okay. So, so why That's, doesn't he tell uh, what is what is the question of white supremacy? What is it? What is the question? I, I won't. Well, huh. Did he answer that anywhere? No. Huh. Uh, he at the end he kind of wrapped it around in kind of a ring structure, saying at the end he says, "Well, the thing with free speech is not 
is is we're not asking the right questions. He's got this thing about questions and never answer, ask, never formulates one. But his the thinking about free speech is simple, and he goes on forever. I couldn't really get a concise clip. Well, of him. Can, if I can just point a couple things out. One, the term free speech, which mockingly is written uh, on the internet as free speech, for some reason, uh, uh, saying you. Uh, an example here is Mastodon. So noagendasocial.com is a part of the complete open Fediverse. <laughs> Anyone can join, can block, do whatever you want. You have your own server, your own crew, and you can connect between servers. If Go look into it. It's worth it. Um, there, in the beginning, we were labeled as a free speech zone, and, and that was a reason to put us on the block list with that description. Yes. And uh, this, there's another term I learned this past week. One of the millennials was staying home for, for spring break. Cancel culture. And it show, it's showing up in different publications. And cancel culture is exactly what we're seeing. And it really only works online. And it is, you apologize because of X, Y, or Z, whether it's true or not. If you don't apologize fast enough, we will cancel you. And we just might cancel you anyway. And when it comes to a Peterson, you know, what you will hear about him, if you ask any, anyone, and it's only headlines, John. It's really, it's sad, but they're only reading headlines. We, I think we proved that with the Green New Deal segment we did on the last show with, you know, about, tell me, talk about climate change. None of them had a coherent sentence about it, young or old. Uh, Peterson, when he said, and that's how it initially started. He said, look, I'm not going to be forced into using a certain pronoun. I will do it. I will, of course, if you want to be called pink, you know, pink elephant, I'll, I'll use that. But I'm not going to be forced by law to do that or by any rule in the university. And he was then deemed to be LGBTQ hater uh, and just throw everything else in. And so, you know, once you're against LGBTQ or properly LGBTQQIAAPK, then immediately you are a Holocaust denier, you're a racist, just throw it all in. And the cancel culture takes over from there. So through no fault of his own, other than just being a professor and saying one thing that he did not want to do if it was uh, mandated by law or by rules of the university, that's how he now ultimately his books have been removed. <laughs> his innocuous books have been removed. Pretty much a Bill Cosby pull your pants up book removed from uh, from sale in New Zealand. And and that's what's going on. It's this cancel culture. It's the sleeping giants. It's the media matters. That's part of it. But it happens with young adult authors. Um, you know, oh, your book is racist. Well, you know what what happens if 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 the young adults start tweeting about, oh, your, or your movie, or whatever it is, then the publishers, distributors, they get all bent out of shape. They have to, oh, oh you better apologize. And, this, and the people who will stand by themselves and who are lone, lone wolves, so to speak, say, no, I'm not going to let you cancel me. You get canceled. <laughs> cancel well, culture. Jokes on everybody. <laughs> um. How so that? <laughs> So he, uh, this guy, yeah, so the funny thing is, you, how did I run into this guy? And I'll talk about him more because he's, a, I think, he's an influencer at this, at this kind of university level. Uh, how did I run into him? Well, I'm looking, oh, I watched the Seattle, uh, Seattle is Dying specials. Ah, that's yes, Como, that was Como good. Produced. And I recommend anyone go look up Seattle is Dying, K-O-M-O, which is a ra the TV station that ran this thing. Very gross uh, depiction of Seattle. Yeah, not unjustified, by the way. And uh, I'm watching this, and they kept bringing up the fact that the, and I, this stemmed, of course, from my running a clip on the, twi I, didn't, I don't, didn't clip it here, but on Twitter, uh, of this city council meeting with this guy. Oh, my goodness. Attention. You know, I thought you would, I, I watched the clip because you tweeted it. Yeah, I should have clipped it. Yeah. I, maybe I'll clip it for the next show. Well, explain what, what we saw there. So when the guy comes up, some guy says, I, I like to talk about some issues in the city. Can I, I'm just going to ask, can you, uh, 
Can you at least pay some attention to me? Because everyone's looking at their computers. They're not paying no, any attention. No, their phones. Not their computers. They just Their heads are bent down looking at their phones. The city or council. Or their phones or the computers. One of the two. Yeah. They're not looking up is the point. Except the one woman who says, just talk. She says, you got three minutes. Two. Two. Now you got two minutes. You're, you're wasting time. And he says, what? I don't have, nobody's paying it. Nobody's listening to me. She says, you got one minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it was just a gross. Very arrogant. Yes. Arrogant, typical douchebag city council of Seattle, and there's, anyway, the special goes into this, and they and they blame these guys because they don't care, and they have a and they and apparently they're not doing any policing, and they no police, the police the police are being told not to arrest uh yeah these people. So I so I went back and looked at this. Who's this district attorney? And there's also some district attorneys from the county, which are just look like a bunch of go- goofballs. None of them even wear a tie. But they, the district attorney said, "Who's this guy?" And he looked like a normal guy. And so I started looking at the list of contributors to his campaign. This is what we do on the No Agenda Show, people. So I dig into the list of his campaign contributors, and boom, John Powell from University of California Berkeley shows up. Ha. Huh. So I said, who the hell is this guy? And so I dig around, and that's when I found this guy's speech at this free speech forum. Yeah. And now I've these I've been alerted because for some reason a guy at Cal Berkeley, who doesn't seem to be from Seattle or have any connection to Seattle, and Seattle is traditionally fairly racist. I see no connection, but he's given money to this guy for what? Yeah. So I uh, now I'm suspicious. Based on that, uh, on the on the Seattle is dying documentary, you know, and the, one of the main conclusions of that, and I'm not completely on board with what they came up with because I, you know, so th- the main conclusion is 100 percent of the homeless in Seattle uh, are in some part of drug, some part of the drug addiction process. That is their thesis. That's their thesis, and I and I have to say that when I look after that, I took a good look around Austin the other day, and it's I think it's the same thing. That these are not uh, necessarily, yeah, it's whatever it is, uh, but it's probably mainly meth, and they're addicts, and they're just being allowed to camp out on the street, and it's it, right in, right by City Hall too. They just camp out wherever they want, and they're not being sent away. The documentary comes up with the uh, lum, lum, luminescent idea to provide free uh, methadone and uh, what's this? Mm, there's something with a B. Three different. Uh, s- drug supplements, if you will, that will wean people off of heroin. And in the 70s, I remember the Netherlands did this. We had a big air heroin epidemic in the 70s when I was there, and they had the methadone bus, and it would come to your house. It would pull <laughs> up. It would. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ultimate socialist plan. Pull up your hat. Burp, burp. Maybe it was more like the ice cream truck. Bing, 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 bing. And then would go out there and hop in the bus, get your methadone shot, and you were good to go. But you know what? At least it's something. Yeah, that's true. At least it's something. There is nothing being done about Seattle or here, which is worse. Yeah. In fact, they had this chart showing all these, you know, crime per 100,000 people, and how it's gone up. Seattle's second to San Francisco. San Francisco doesn't enforce the law at all. I mean, you can if you park your car in San Francisco anywhere, pretty much anywhere, the likelihood of it being of the window being smashed in so they can grab something inside is very high yeah. in certain areas, not all areas. But because I mean, this I go to San Francisco a lot, and I have never had that happen to me. Of course, I drive a twenty-five year old Lexus that needs washing. <laughs> people are like, hey, helps. maybe I could Believe live. It. Maybe I could live in that thing. Yeah, keep <laughs> a lot of stuff in the back, so it looks kind of like you're living in it. Then you you go, oh, fellow traveler, no problem. Nothing to steal from him. Well, I was reading this morning that uh, in Palo Alto, in fact, the whole entrance towards Stanford University, El Camino Real, is lined with RVs. Yeah, we got the RV thing in Berkeley too. But I mean, that's that's one of the most prestigious universities in the world, and the whole road up to the entrance is just homeless people in, in RVs. Yeah, well, I guess they're, they're not, not homeless because the they got a, they got an the, RV. The city governments have been taken over by left left leaners, mm-hmm. and they will not enforce these laws because they're unfair to the homeless. They're unfair to yeah. this. They're racist. They're this. They're that. Now. Yeah. 
I will say this. I didn't get any clips from it, but one of our producers sent me the latest, and I guess it's been going around the internet, this Mr. Reagan character. Oh, yeah. I saw, I, I, I saw Chunk, Chunk uh, refute Mr. Reagan's most yeah, recent well, video. Yeah, well, Chunk can do what he wants. But yeah. Mr. Reagan had doubled down on his basic thesis, and he found new people behind the old people. Yes. <laughs> Which I think is funny because he could do a third version. Yeah, with the pe- that, finding newer people. Who was this new guy? But like Alex something or other? He's behind. Char- he's, weird looking character. He looks a lot like uh, the guy Gert, from from Gert Builders. He looks like him. Well, he looks like the guy the from hair. from Zoolander. He's got big hair. Yeah, yeah. And they're just a young socialist that think that you know. But these people, they, they're going for all kinds of district attorney jobs. That's when I got the the hook on the district attorney thing that that also triggered me to go looking around and it's like these people have got to people have got to wake up and vote these people out we're going to end up like the uk if we're not already halfway there and that was a question someone posed to me today said what is the likelihood that in the united states we'd see yellow vests like we see in paris i'm like zero Absolutely zero percentage chance. The American population is not voting anybody out. They're asleep. They're hypnotized. They're debt laden. And they're hypnotized by what you're supposed to buy tomorrow. Credit karma is helping you get you there. No, there's, there's no one is going to protest in any manner whatsoever against this. No, I agree. And if they can't, pro- if you take a look at the Seattle is dying documentary, and Seattle was. I've always thought about this years ago, uh, about what cities are viable in this country as as inner cities, inner cities. Mm-hmm. In other words, of downtown, you had, Seattle was always one of them. It, mm-hmm. it was a pleasant city. It was a pleasant small city when compared to places like Cleveland, right. which is just, you know, even though maybe there's a vibrant little financial district, the rest mm-hmm. of it is hell. Uh, Detroit's a really good example. And I recommend, I've said this when I went there, everybody should go drive around Detroit. It's just fascinating. There is an inner. Well, downtown is, is really, is, is fantastic. Yeah, the, though, little right? down, the little bitty downtown is fine, but the rest of the place is falling apart. And, right. um, and the downtown had to be rebuilt from what was falling apart. But, but there was towns like Seattle and San Francisco, I'd categorize as such, as opposed to Los Angeles, which has a crappy downtown. Mm-hmm. That were nice little cities, but they've let them deteriorate, and they're becoming a St. Louis, which mm-hmm. is another place mm-hmm. to visit. Mm-hmm. St. Louis is a hellhole. Well, you know, I, I think the best place still, and I'm boots on the ground, to watch this taking place before our very eyes is Austin, Texas. And, you know, we have another six weeks here before we move to the to the new house. But you have no idea how many people are streaming into Austin People with money and jobs, and there's just one building after another. There's another 35-story Google building going up as we speak right behind us. And then all you see in these little pockets, like at the the intersection between Cesar Chavez and the and the first, uh, first Street Bridge, is a little clump of trees, and there's eight or nine people smoking, you know, meth or crack or whatever, you know, meth probably. And, you know, the, they'll pop out whenever the light hits red and walk their signs. Which, you know, it's it's taking place before our very eyes. And it's it's a head shaker. It's like, it, it, just like, that's what bothered me when I was in San Francisco and we had the company there. I, people would step over the same homeless people every single day. And I was like, that's, I get tired of that. This is, why isn't this something being done? Anything. It's the same guy. He sees me, I see him. And here, it's just people just, it, they don't exist. They just step over and walk around as if they don't exist. Well, I blame these city governments. They're very poorly uh, they're oh, yeah. run by socialists and, yes. and idealists, and they're, they should. And there's you can't get them, get rid of them. It, you should be able to get rid of them by voting them out. By the way, Austin is also incredibly racist. All the good schools have only white kids in them. From the people who have Beto in their front yard. Oh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Enough of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk. Let's just for a second. Uh, let's listen to uh, the latest Act 19 from the true 
Uh, uprising heroes in France, the Yellow Vests. Thousands of anti-government Yellow Vest protesters have gathered outside the iconic Sacré-Cœur Cathedral in northern Paris for the 19th consecutive Saturday of demonstrations. The Interior Ministry says that fewer people turned out this Saturday compared to sure. previous weeks. And that will be a relief for the government. Last Saturday, authorities oh, yeah, uh, came right, under right. fire after 300 so-called caissers or wreckers essentially ran a mock on the Champs-Élysées in central Paris, uh, breaking uh, shop windows, looting, even setting fire to a bank uh, and a restaurant. Unsurprisingly, this Saturday, there's been a very strong uh, police presence in the capital. Some uh, 4,700 officers deployed. They say they've made dozens of arrests and that they've already uh, issued a number of fines to people trying to demonstrate in areas where they weren't allowed to. Yeah, this is new. This is... uh... Uh, you're not allowed to demonstrate here. Go away. Now, crucially, this Saturday, the government, for the first time, decided to redeploy the army from Operation Sentinelle, an anti-terrorism operation, uh, <laughs> to protect uh, public buildings in order, in turn, to free up the police. Yeah, protect the buildings. Kill the slaves. It's a, it's a mess. It's a mess over there. It's a mess. Yeah. But then I, I'm so in awe. They're just unrelenting. They won't let up. Before... I keep forgetting to do this, and we need to talk about this story because we're never going to get a clip about it. No news is covering it, and it's important. Uh, This is about the Southern Poverty Law Center, who we have been tracking for a decade until it became really popular. And we were pretty much one of the few saying, wow, look at these guys. They got four or five hundred million dollars in this huge endowment and they and they they build up hate lists and they just yeah, put they in. became a, a, a juggernaut for fundraising. Well, and not only that, but they are at the center, at the center of all these fact check networks. Um, so if you want to know if a statement is true, then you go to the fact check. The, I think it's the, it's the national, the international fact check network which always, all the networks, all the websites, all the news uh, providers all say that they use the SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center, as one of their guiding beacons of light in, yeah. in who is the hateful, worst. who is, who is a, a racist, who's on the list, who's not on the list. Two weeks ago, the founder, Morris Dees, the co-founder, of the Southern Poverty Law Center was ousted from his own organization uh, because it's a mess. There's r- complaints of racism, sexism, and now the president of the Southern Poverty Law Center, Richard Cohen, is stepping down. Yep. And and it is a non-story. It's just nothing. Employees uh, complaining of toxic workplace, only old white men running the show. Everything that they accuse others of, the Southern Poverty Law Center, they have been guilty of themselves, apparently, for a long time. And people have left. I don't know if they have non Well, it's been taken over by a bunch of socialist radicals. Well, when and did that start? That part of the, what they're being accused of seems to me, a lot of it seems to be disingenuous bullcrap. What? Of what they're being accused of? Yeah, I think a lot of his – I think Morris Dees got ousted because he was a white guy. They didn't want white guys anymore, just a racist thing. And I think this other guy quit because he saw the writing on the wall because it's been infiltrated by the Bernie Sanders type of socialists. Hmm. All most people – mostly people of, of color but not black people. Just a bunch of mixed so – just- So are you saying that perhaps none of these atrocities as they're described occurred? I'm saying – yes, exactly what I'm saying. Hmm. Okay. Which makes more sense to me because these guys, these aren't the type of guys. I know these types of guys, these type of guys that are in these kinds of operations. They're circumspect. They're not like a bunch of douchebags in Hollywood. I mean, it's nice to put them on, put that idea into everybody's head that mm, everyone's a douchebag okay. from Hollywood. Good point. But that's not, that's not the case. It's just a bunch of guys. Okay. Old men, old white men. And, and more is these. You ever seen that guy? He's old, very old. I could get his hand up to pinch somebody in the ass. <laughs> very old white guy. <laughs> He's a very old white guy. Now, so I think this is just a, a coup d'etat at the Southern Poverty, which is fine because we never liked him at, to begin with. But so I get this. This So JC, or, I'm sorry, Jay brings in this, uh, this <laughs> brings in this whole package of direct marketing material. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's this? She says, she says, what is this bull crap? 
And so it's a letter from Toni Morrison, author, Jay Dvorak, very well done. It looks like it was almost typed. It's over, please. It's a one. It's a direct marketing letter of six pages. So yeah, six pages, which is an old form. And it goes on about how they should give. I And then P.S. It always has the P.S. at the end. We do that, too. Yeah. I would like to add some of them do PPS, by the way. And this is after six pages of typewritten, supposed typewritten, and a, and a blue signature. It's got the whole thing. Mm. Tony Morrison. I would like to ask you to do two small things in addition to sending a generous gift to Morris, <laughs> to Morris D's uh, and the SPLC. Please sign the enclosed note of appreciation to Morris and his staff. This is so. This huge package went out just before. Oh Morris my got God! It. This is a very expensive looking package. It sounds like. Oh, believe me, this is a this is a bust. <laughs> so this was a total uh, a total fail. Well, I would think. Yeah. And me, so it was do this, do that. And this is from Tony Morrison, and then so she's got a certificate. Well done. So with the with the little edge on it and everything, certificate of appreciation presents. She hasn't done anything. I don't even know she how she got on the mailing list. I grilled her about that. <laughs> Presented to Jay Dvorak in recognition of your important contribution to the ongoing fight against hatred and intolerance in America. Oh. The name shown above will be added to the Wall of Tolerance in Montgomery, <laughs> Alabama, to provide inspiration to all those who choose to make a stand against hatred. Thank you for taking the stand. Signed, Morris D's. <laughs> I said, Jay, this is a collector's it's item. It's a big collector's item. And so there's an also a sheet from the desk of Toni Morrison. And, you know, I don't know what Toni Morrison's got to do with this. She's a writer. And uh, and then, then one of those classic old, I haven't seen a good package like this. Hey, but, but hold on a second. So they have a wall of tolerance? <laughs> I mean, aren't walls immoral by definition? There's a wall of tolerance in Montgomery, <laughs> Alabama. A wall. I, I think I want that at the new house. I'll suggest to Tina. Can we make a wall of tolerance, please? Yeah, put a wall of tolerance. A wall of up. tolerance needs to go up. Jeez. And it's got all these little additional things that get packaged in there. Just look like, like any old-fashioned direct marketing thing, which they probably still work, I'm sure. Mm. Um. That's just unbelievable. But that, yeah, I got a kick out of this. And then I said, wait a minute, but Morris D's was just ousted. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it, so the disappointing thing is that, you know, no one is, I think it has to be because of the positioning that, that everyone has given. The, Clooney just gave the SPLC a million bucks. Yeah. So the because they, they need the money? Uh, it, that was virtue signaling. Mm, but this this should be reported on. And if it and and I'm actually I'm I'm thinking about what you said there that yeah I guess more although you know old white men can also be said in their in some old ways which may be appropriate but there's really no reporting so we really don't know what no, happened this is a scam because no one's doing well the whole thing has been a scam the whole thing's been a scam and so the scam caught up with the scammers <laughs> yeah there you go and they got scammed out of their jobs I mean but I'm not buying it for a minute. Hmm. That's why there's two of us. Yeah, well, you'd probably, if you think about it, you probably won't buy it either. Uh, Morris D's. <laughs> I want to hate him. <laughs> well, I don't like I really want the guy's to. He's arrogant, but. <laughs> I want to hate you know. him. I, I just want to. I can't help myself. Yeah. All right, we got about, uh, about 15 minutes uh, before we start thanking some people for our. For this program, I, I well, think. Well, we, we want to get into this one thing because I, I do have the definitive clip for the Mueller thing. You yeah, know, Mueller I, yeah is, I think we should get into Mueller. Yeah, because well, here, here, let's listen to the. Well, the, the is this a background or do we want to explain? Well, no, this kind of this way, I, I have a background or two, but I want to do the definitive clip first. This okay. is the PBS News Hour on Mueller Shield. With Mark Shields asked the question. Hold on a second. Uh, yes, I got it here. All right. If it's the case there are no indictments being recommended, um, that's going to bring a sigh of relief from this White House, isn't it? Uh, I, 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 there, I think we, we and that uh, <laughs> I think um, and, no. uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> now you edited that. Yeah, you did. You okay. caught me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that kind of noise. You know, what I did when this came out, and just so everyone understands where we're at, 
I mean, I can I can summarize this very quickly. So Mueller writes a report. It goes to the uh, attorney general, a new guy, although he's been around for a long time, is just like Bob Mueller. Bill Barr is highly respected. Yeah, he's an old uh, Respect that. And so we respect him. And then uh, Barr uh, writes a note to uh, Congress and to the American people. And he says, all right, here's what I got. I got this in. We're going to take a look at it, see if we can let everybody know what's in it. But just so you know, there is no further indictments, which means no criminal activity that needs action to be taken uh, upon, which was immediately translated into... Well, yeah, but, you know, we had this whole thing about you can't indict the sitting president, so maybe he did something really bad, but he just can't really indict him. <laughs> and all this. this <laughs> One of many. Just, one, yeah. Well, I, I actually, let me do this for you. I noticed this, and I got real lucky because uh, uh, Tom Starkweather picked up on it, too. I, If you'll recall, <laughs> let me just pull this up here. Um when this is one of those famous i just pulled 30 seconds of one of those great mixes where you, all the media is talking about tipping point a bombshell etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, there was one the walls are closing in the walls are closing in and this one the beginning of the end for the trump presidency the beginning of the end i believe this is the beginning of the end i do too it's really the beginning of the end the beginning of the end one astrologer says this means the beginning of the end for president donald trump the beginning of the end of the trump presidency it was the beginning of the end today the beginning of the end this is the beginning of the end 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 and the beginning of the end. In fact, if this were a football game, we're in the third quarter. May even be the beginning of the end. All right. So the beginning of the end. That was and and the minute this the news of the report came out, this got turned around into something new. I picked up on it. Tom picked up on it. I only have a couple examples. There will be more. So remember, we went from. This is the beginning of the end. The real fight is just beginning. The way I look at it, this is the end of the beginning. The uh, beginning of the end. This is just the end of the beginning. This is the start of something, apparently, not the end of something. It's the end of the beginning. We went from the beginning of the end to the end of the beginning. Now, they're very creative there in Washington. Wow. The end of the beginning. I, I was blown away. And, and I was like, oh, I got to find more of these. And Tom actually did a mix with those in there. I was like, gosh, send me those. Because it was, I think it Macy Hirono, she started off. She's the, the twerp from Hawaii. That's good. But as I say, this is uh, the way I look at it. This is the end of the beginning. <laughs> it's the end of the beginning. So, yes. So, Mueller was just the end of the beginning. He left us a trail of breadcrumbs to follow. So, it's clear what we need to do. And I went and looked at the uh, Dutch publications, Dutch newspapers. They didn't even mention the indictments. All that you see in the in the foreign press or the European press that I can read, which is mainly Dutch, uh, Belgian, um, German, and some French. I think I got a did I get a France twenty four clip out of here? No, um, they just don't hear. Here's Euro News. They don't even mention indictments. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has submitted his report on alleged Russian involvement in U.S. President Donald Trump's. 2016 election campaign and the much-awaited conclusions could be made public this weekend. Mueller handed over his work to Attorney General William Barr on Friday and Barr has written to congressional leaders promising rapid publication of the results. But the political battle will now focus on whether the full report is to be made public. See, they, they the don't, key unknown... They don't even mention indictments at all. It's not mentioned. It's like, oh, the report's well, here. be on edge. Well, yeah, but it's, whereas it was obvious, the first news that came out, which is what most European journalists do is they copy-paste for the next day, is uh, indictments, uh, no further indictments. The thing I don't know what they're thinking. I have no, that one's got me a little well, bit befuddled, because I like the, the, the beginning of the, uh, end the, of the beginning. End of the beginning. Well, now, how about the, the New York Times? This was an opinion piece by Carolyn Fredrickson. And Carolyn Fredrickson, I had to look her up because I had no idea who she was. Uh, she is the president of the American Constitution Society. And the American Constitution Society, um, they were the ones that uh, wrote and spent most of the time trying to get the Protect 
Mueller's Investigation Act going. So these were the people that were so sure that what Robert Mueller was doing was going to bring down the Trump presidency that this one outfit was pushing and pushing and pushing to get law passed so that Mueller would be protected and couldn't be fired, etc., which ultimately uh, didn't happen, and it appears there was no hindrance. So she gets to do an op-ed, and the title of it is, We Don't Need to Read the Mueller Report. Even if it's never released, the public already knows enough. (laughs) Now, I'm going to read three paragraphs from this, and you tell me if these are lies or not. People lie to hide the truth. They lie to hide crimes. And while everyone is dying for a peek at Robert Mueller's bombshell bombshell report, she doesn't even know it's a bombshell report, to see if he says any crimes were committed by the Trump campaign in 2016, the truth is actually already out there, hidden in plain sight. Mr. Mueller's report may never go public, but we don't need a peek at the recommendations he delivered on Friday to Attorney General William Barr to credibly assess that something unethical and likely illegal went on in 2016. The repeated lies told by Trump campaign staff members, lies about their connections to Russian figures, already spin a grand tale of conspiracy and deceit. And it's a tale so suspect and sordid that President Trump and his associates felt the need to lie to hide it from law enforcement. This is not conjecture. Here we go. Some of Mr. Trump's people are already in jail, having been convicted in federal court for lying to investigators about their connections to and interactions with Russians during the 2016 campaign. Is that true? What happened? These are all procedural uh, indictments. Uh, and the one with Flynn would be the most egregious where these guys come in and they start t- casually chatting and he's just telling them stuff. And well, listen to this. Time. Listen to this. There's the top Trump campaign official, Paul Manafort, who was serving time for lying about his history of lobbying for Russian interests and sharing Trump campaign polling data with the Russian intelligence asset during the campaign. I don't think he's in jail for that. No, he's not. He's not in, ju- in jail for that. He's in jail for uh, bank fraud, tax fraud, fraud, fraud. yeah, tax evasion, bank fraud. Yeah. There's the close Trump associate, Roger Stone, recently indicted on charges of lying about communications he had with WikiLeaks before it released damaging information about Hillary Clinton that law enforcement believes was stolen by the Russian hackers. It's not it's not entirely true. I don't think he lied about those communications. He, may he doesn't have, think so either. Yeah. No. So, but you know, this was unleashed and the and from the same people, the same organization which yeah, the Hillary By people. the way, that's Hillary people, it's Eric Holder, it's all these all these people are in this uh, American Constitution Society. They were so adamant that Bob Bob Mueller's report, this is the one, this is it, it's going to we have to protect it, protect Mueller. And now hey, we don't even need to read it. That's how desperate this is. And shame on the New York Times. Oh, the New York Times is pathetic. Shame and on now that. let's go to, to somebody else that it seems to be beside himself, which is Chris Matthews, with kind of a similar complaint. And he, let me just summarize so you, can, you won't have to listen to this twice. Matthews believes that because it was so much meat, because there were like so much, there was a few meetings between the Russians and Donald Trump Jr. Or who didn't, you know, he's looking for some data numbers. points, data points. There's all these data points. That it had to be, there had to be something nefarious going on, and now it's been ruined by this Mueller report, and he is irked about this. This is a big lead there. Joining me right now is Democratic Congressman Joe Nagoose of Colorado, who sits on the House Judiciary Committee. I'm going back to your question. How can there be a charge here or a claim of uh, collusion? Uh, to formally, the term is ad- advancing a s- Russian conspiracy to interfere and screw with our elections, basically. How can that <laughs> I love how he goes, uh, this is what it's officially called, and then he just throws in screw. <laughs> a s- Russian conspiracy to interfere and screw with our elections, basically. <laughs> screw. How can that be laid, that cl- that c- blame, that accusation be laid against the president by Mueller if he's not indicting any of Trump's people here? 
Uh, so thank you for having me, Chris. I've been listening to the questions you've been raising. I think they're important ones, but I think it's hard to speculate until we've actually seen the I'm report. asking. I'm I mean, not it, speculating. It, it, why didn't he? Why didn't he indict? We were told by a DOJ official tonight there will be no indictments. That means no indictments about collusion. Doesn't that startle you with after all these meetings? I suspect that the underlying rationale, and I would hope uh, that the underlying rationale is detailed in the report. It's why the judiciary chairman, and you heard from Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer, uh, they're ultimately making clear that they believe the report should be released to the public and that the underlying findings and evidence should be transmitted to the relevant committees in the Congress, including the Judiciary Committee. I mean, that's why it's important to get this report so that we can understand the rationale behind well, decisions, to prosecute, uh, I'm not decisions not to prosecute and decisions not to prosecute. I'm not patient here because we've been waiting for this thing for two years ago comes out on a Friday at five o'clock and that excuse me that's the dumping ground it, yes especially on March Madness weekend it's more it's not just the dumping ground it's the poop pit of the dumping ground <laughs> yeah it is he's right about that well I do have a thought about this um especially seeing that the president this morning tweeted something like hey good morning have a great day which means he's feeling fine about it so I guess he he knows something uh, He's been very, very quiet. He must be very worried. Um, okay, let's just review Mueller again. So Mueller came in to the, as director of the FBI. It was just weeks before 9-11. It's just a coincidence, but just weeks before, I think maybe even two weeks. It was some ridic- ridiculously close. He goes through that entire thing, uh, is really a part of the Patriot Act and setting up the FISA courts, and so he's an integra- integral part of this. Um, then, uh, Obama comes in and with Hillary and they're like, oh, you know, we, yeah, look, we have this 10 year term, uh, which was set in, you know, into law because we never want to have an FBI that can be weaponized again. Like it was originally with, uh, with Hoover. So, mm, and they wrote, was it a 60 page paper explaining how they could give Robert Mueller another two years which he then took and to clean up whatever messes there were and in hindsight seeing this now i'm pretty confident that looking at at the the true russian collusion which was obviously um everything that podesta and manafort were doing with the ukrainians um and russians with you know uranium one hillary's reset the half a million dollar speeches in moscow for bill the money that came into the clinton foundation it's very obvious where the true collusion was and then they had this you know this opposition research which now in hindsight i don't even think was ever meant to be taken this far it was just meant to kind of like oh you know we can always throw this pp tape shit out and it'll bring him down but trump turned out to be pretty bulletproof with that stuff at witness the pussy grab him by the pussy tape or audio tape and then these two jabronis these jamoke fbi agents struck and page they took it way too far and it went all the way up to the top everyone could be implicated holy crap bring in Mueller to clean the shit up and i think that's all that happened here he's cleaned everything up made so sure- you think that Mueller's a mop-up man yes i do and if he was really good, he'd lay the groundwork for Hillary to swoop in and run against Trump. But I don't think he had the time for that. But yes, I think ultimately now, in hindsight, no indictments. And, you know, you see how the how the media, ro- well, if it, we had the whole thing today, we could say there were 36 indictments, of which a whole bunch were Russian bots and hacking, you know, somewhere. Indictments, is, by the way, is not convictions. Yeah, they do have a oh, number. No, that's not according to Brennan or whoever it was. What's not going to Brennan? An indictment is a conviction, according to remember the. Oh no, no, court? that no, that's that's just uh, the alleged. <laughs> alleged. <laughs> Hold on, let me pull it up for you, uh, Brennan. Here we go. Wasn't this it? For example, this week on Friday. Oh no, that's not. Hey, didn't we make that an ISO? I don't know. Yeah, we did. Oh, I don't yeah. remember it. Yes, it was Brennan. Alleged guilty. Hmm. I got to find this one again. Yeah, you're not guilty unless you're alleged. Uh, alleged yeah, you're not. You're not guilty something. until not guilty in Ted until you've alleged you've alleged to be. Uh, mm. Unless you're alleged to have committed a crime, you must have it there. Yeah, it's really odd, but I I find all kinds of Brennan stuff, but I don't see the. All right, well, you have to. You'll have to forgive me. It's my illness. 
Yeah, Sorry. You're sick. Sick. So, so anyway, yes, I have the feeling that Brennan was brought in, but but Brennan, it, not Brennan, Mueller. Uh, Mueller, I'm sorry. Uh, the Mueller was brought in to mop it up because it went way too far. And 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 there, yes, you know, there were meetings. And remember Condoleezza Rice? She said, "Oh, there was this meeting. I wanted nothing to do with it." Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, been all these little things, and and most of these people have have already been extracted. Everyone's already out, <laughs> quietly gone away, and. With this thesis in mind, I almost want to think that Trump knew it. He That's why he was so calm about it. He's like, all right. Because remember when he got in, he's like, I don't want to, these these poor Clintons, they're old people. I don't want to, you know, they've suffered enough. I don't want to lock her they've up. suffered enough. He said that. I could, he said something to that effect. Like, they've suffered enough. I don't want to be locking her up. Let her go. She can be a private person. And I think that Mueller came in like, I got to clean all this crap up. We'll leave you alone. And maybe that's why he was so brazen. He said anything he wanted to, but he never stopped the investigation. It's like, okay, just let him just clean it up and get out of the way. But to say that he, if you really wanted to get Trump on something, I don't see how it could be difficult. It just, it, you know, we'll see what's in the report. Uh, but I, I have a feeling there's not going to be much in there. It's not- I don't think it's going to be released. I think mm. it's going to be partly mm. released. Mm. I think Barr is going to be circumspect because if this is a cleanup, cam- a cleanup, mop up operation, as we like to say, yeah, it would have to be something you can't release the whole thing. You're not going to release the whole thing. You're going to redact the so-called classified information, which there should well, be. Well, no, none. it's just not. It's not even going to be in there. It's all the stuff that was done. It's not even going to be in there. They, no, but you're going to say when you black out tons of pages. I don't. Th- I don't think. I don't think we'll see a lot of uh, redacted pages. I really don't. It's going to okay, be. Well, I say I think we will see them, and I think that we're not going to see the whole report. And I and Barr, if I was Barr, for one thing, it's up to him to right. do what he wants to do with the report. Congress can go on. We want to see the report. <laughs> we want to see the report. Uh, in fact, uh, Trump, knowing that it's not going to happen, has come out and said. I think the whole report should yeah. be released. Yes, exactly. And I think he's insincere because here's <laughs> let's play this. No kidding. Report. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes, of course. No, it's just funny. I think Trump's being insincere. Mm-hmm. Well, that's never happened. <laughs> Mueller report reactions by Beto and others. Reaction to the completion of the Mueller report was swift. The Justice <laughs> Department notified top congressional leaders from both parties that it had received the report from special counsel Robert Mueller and many, including all eight Democrats in Congress who are running for the president called for the report to be made public. Ed O'Keefe is on Capitol Hill with the very latest. Ed, good morning. Good morning, Michelle. When Washington's most anticipated moment in recent memory actually happened, almost nobody was up here on Capitol Hill. Congress is on recess, but that didn't stop members of both parties from calling for the report's full release. That report needs to be made public. The Democratic race for president quickly became a campaign to make the Mueller report public. Nobody, including the president of the United States, is above the law. The American people have a right to know. Competing candidates found common ground in calling for the release of the unredacted report. We are owed the facts, and if we do not receive them 243 years in, there's nothing that guarantees us a 244th. Despite the news, there will be no new indictments. Beto O'Rourke Beto. did not back off his call to impeach the president. Those are grounds enough for members of the House to bring up uh, the issue of impeachment. But Democratic leaders in Congress aren't yet ready to go there. I'm not going to draw any conclusions until we see not only the whole report, but the underlying findings and documentation. Democrats said they're prepared to subpoena the report and suggested the special counsel should testify. I think it would be very valuable to the American people to have Mr. Mueller come before the Judiciary Committee in public and walk the country through the report. (laughs) Um, Friday night on the Bill Maher show, Eric Swalwell was on, and here's what he said they're doing. Did the Democrats put too much trust in the Mueller report? Because I don't need the Mueller report to know he's a traitor. I have a TV. (laughs) And people are on their way to jail, 
have gone to jail. There's probably a farming out of other investigations. But yes, if you have a TV or a Twitter account, you've already seen obstruction of justice. And so I think the, the team has seen that. But here's what's important, is that the public sees the report contemporaneously with the president. He should not be allowed to edit. He should not be allowed to restrict or sanitize. And Mueller has to come before Congress and tell us its veracity as far as what Can you make that happen? Yeah, we've, we're going to oh. subpoena him. And Adam Schiff... You subpoena Mueller? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to subpoena Mueller. This is going to be yeah. great. The ratings bonanza for C-SPAN. Mueller says he doesn't care. He doesn't he care what? be glad to go on to thing. But I wonder if they, I wonder if there's a, some sort of quid pro quo where Mueller actually gets paid. To go on the show? To or, go and get, to go in front of Congress. Do you think he cares about money? It's not like he's not going to throw money away. Yeah, I do think he cares about mm-hmm. money. If he's going to waste his time for hours and hours of being, you know, slammed and and banged. Right. right. I think you should get paid. Well, that would be a good precedent. I don't think that happens, does it? I don't know if it hasn't. Mm-hmm. Here's a, so here was the resp- just because I played the bit from Bill Maher. This was Bill Maher's opening Friday night. So the report is in no indictments, and here's how he he spins it for his crowd. <laughs> <laughs> a big night. It's a big news day. I know why you're happy. The Mueller report finally came out. <sighs> For liberals, this is like Christmas. Uh, <laughs> if it was based on real events. But, um... <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I should take that joke. Um, I couldn't quite figure out what he meant there. <laughs> But wait, nobody knows what's in the report. Everybody on TV is giving an opinion on this very important report that they have not read. I just saw a graphic on MSNBC, breaking speculation. What we do know for sure is that individual one is in deep number two. Uh, so he's got a lot of jokes, but the, the jokes don't re- you know, really refer to the reality in this case. <laughs> But will it matter? Because no matter how damning it is, Trump for the last two years has poisoned the well, constantly saying Mueller is the crooked one, right? And it's all been written by angry Democrats and it's the deep state. That's what I used to do when I knew a bad report card was coming. I'd be like, Mom, keep in mind the teacher is an asshole who has it out for me. It's- I mean, there you go. That's exactly. So the switch is, is like from, oh, Mueller's going to take care of it. Papa Mueller is going to make it happen to, oh, he's just like the asshole teacher. Yeah, that's the analogy, Drew. Yeah. I think the guy that was really left out to, to dry is uh, Brennan, though. By the way, I found I found the clip. People are innocent until, you know, alleged to be involved in some type of criminal activity. <laughs> <laughs> that's a classic. Yeah, it was misspelled, so I got it now. I've corrected it. Um, but Brennan, I think, this, a lot of this was his operation. He's yeah, so he, stupid. Yes. I, if you're going to play there, I think I know what clip you're going to play. And I'm now beside myself because I had this clip and I don't remember clipping it. This is the one t- two weeks before. Yes. Yesterday. Yes, he yeah. just predicts all the hell's breaking loose. Yes. And I think that he really got screwed in this deal. And it kind of, when, when you, in hindsight, so this was two and a half, three weeks ago. And he's even saying, oh, I don't think he wants to release the report on the Ides of March when the Ides of March is when we had the uh, yes, right, the right. New Zealand this is shooting. The clip. Yes, yeah, this, this is a is great the clip. clip. Um, but the, all the things he says in here, I think he was left to hang. You know, this is like, hey, you know what, son, Brennan, why don't you go play little uh, analyst there on NBC? Don't worry, we'll take care of it. We got Bob Mueller on the case. You're good, man. We're good. Your plan was great. Don't worry about it. For example, this week on Friday, not knowing anything about it, but Friday is the day that the grand jury indictments come down. And also this Friday is better than next Friday because next Friday is the 15th of March, which is the Ides of March. And I don't think Robert Mueller will want to have that dramatic uh, flair of the Ides of March when he is going to be delivering what I think are going to be his indictments, the final indictments, as well as the report that he gives the attorney general. What makes you believe that he has more indictments? Um, because he hasn't addressed the issues related to criminal conspiracy as well as any individuals. Criminal conspiracy involving the Russian and Russians, yes, yeah. I think it was very, and, in, and in terms of an American area, person, you know, U.S. person. That's an area you know something about. That, that investigation was developing while you were still on the job. I like 
how he gets caught off guard by this question. We'll roll it back just a little bit. Um, knowing that, so he, Matthews is saying, well, you know, uh, this happened uh, while you were still on the job. Yes, O'Donnell. Larry O'Donnell. Uh, Donald, I'm Lawrence sorry. O'Donnell. Yeah. So this happened while you were on the job, and he's got, because uh, 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 he created this. I think Brennan was the yeah, guy. kind of cornered him there, I think. I, I don't think O'Donnell meant to. No, he did. didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't. And and Brennan is caught on, on, flat-footed. Ha, ba, 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 ba. Person, yeah, U.S. person. That's an area you know something about. That, that investigation was developing while you were still on the job. Well, it was in terms of looking at what was going on with the Russians and whether or not mm-hmm. U.S. persons were actively collaborating, colluding, cooperating and involved in a conspiracy with them or not. Uh, but also if there's going to be any member of Did the Trump family. Did you see enough family. at that stage to believe that there would now that that would result in indictments once investigated? I, I th- thought at the time that there was going to be individuals who were going to have uh, issues with the Department of Justice. Yes, and I think we've already seen a number of individuals who have been indicted, either have pled guilty uh, or have been convicted now. So, I, again, I don't have any inside knowledge. I'm not talking with anybody in special yes, counsels. Yes, you do. You have the inside but, knowledge. But, but of not what, about the status of, of the investigation right now. Yeah. But I do think also if anybody from the... What did he say there? Because he, he didn't like that either. I don't have any inside knowledge. I'm not talking with anybody in special counsel. Yes, councils. you do. You have the inside well, knowledge. But, but of not what, about the status of, of the investigation right now. Yeah. But I do think also if anybody from the Trump family, an extended family, is going to be indicted, it would be in the final act of mm-hmm. Mueller's investigation. Because Bob Mueller and I think his team knows that if he were to do something, uh, indicting a Trump family member, or if he were to go forward with indictment on criminal conspiracy involving U.S. persons, that would basically be the death knell of the special counsel's office. Because I don't believe that Donald Trump would allow uh, Bob Mueller to continue in the aftermath of those types of actions. John Brennan, thank you very much. Uh, it, you have to listen to every word in the John Brennan answer. Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Yes, you do. You got to listen to every word because this guy had no clue what was going on. <laughs> he was totally he, had, he of, was in the, the dark. Loop. In the dark. Whereas, what's his face? Um, didn't Rod Rosenstein come out with some statement that everyone can like before the report came before the report went to the attorney general? And it was like, uh, oh, no, Comey, I think. Maybe Comey was even backpedaling. Everyone was kind of soft on it, but Brennan didn't know. Yeah, he was left out. Screw that guy. No. Yeah. Okay, so to summarize, um, you think the report will never come out? No, I didn't say that. I said the report as a, as a giant, one whole big report, unredacted, will never come out. I think they will release bits and pieces. Hmm. Okay. I'm hoping because here's the thing. I am the attorney general. It's my call. Mm -hmm. And all these guys, you must do this. You must do that. Hey, you guys aren't my supervisors. Right. I I would I would put my back up against the wall. if I had all these demands put on me by these outsiders. Mm -hmm. Congress has no has no. They're they're not managing. Wait, they have oversight. They have oversight, but they cannot tell you what to do. True. They're not your boss. Right. It's an exec. It's from the exec. It's in fact, it conflicts with your boss. This is the attorney general is part of the executive section of government. You got the executive, the legislative and the judicial. The legislative can't be telling executive people what to do. It's not their job. They don't have any any over. It's not their job. They, it's just not. It's it's not separation of powers. It's a problem. And I would it's be a if problem. I was the attorney general. I would say this is bull crap. I'm not going to do what you just because you want me to do it. Hmm. I want you to do stuff too. Hey, I tell you what. I want you to all quit your jobs, <laughs> resign from office. Go do that. <laughs> he can't do that. This guy. They, you know they don't have to listen to him either. <laughs> oh, he'll be canceled. We'll just cancel that guy. We just he go on Twitter. We go on Twitter leader. and we cancel I would, him. Be, I would be surprised if he knuckled on at this point. And with that, high time, I thank you for your courage and say in the morning to you, the man who put the C in cancel culture, John C. Devorak. In the morning to you, Mr. Adam Curry. In the morning, old beast that they found beats on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water. Yeah, the dames and knights out there. In the morning to the trolls in the troll room. Uh, NoAgendaStream.com is where you can listen to the show live. You can troll around. You can troll us. You can troll each other. You could also give us helpful little one-liners and information that works. And we love seeing that. At least I do. I'm always, I always got my third eye in the chat room. In the morning to... Uh, Darren O'Neill. 
the ping-ponging back and forth with CSB, Darren O'Neill brought us the artwork for episode 1122. The title of that was Cyclogenesis, and it was another winner. It was the Burger King logo with Brexit King. Order, yeah, this order. Is, this is a D- Darren O'Neill specialty. This is the kind of thing he does very well, yes. Yeah. And, and sometimes he'll put eight pieces up. <laughs> and I don't know how he does it. He's got a factory. <laughs> he's got a lot he's of like, templates. He's got like the Andy Warhol factory. He's got kid, you know, hot models running around just he's making this stuff. He's probably got a wha- whack-em table and he's are little things all over the place and he's throwing them together and then posting, posting, posting. Well, he's doing something. Yeah, he's a production guy. We like it very much. Thank you so much, Darren. Noagendaartgenerator.com is where you can upload your artwork for every single show. You can get a good idea of... Now, did you want to say something about the um, evergreens? Because we also have an evergreen category. You were moaning, bitching about that uh, when we were doing the art. You were going to mention something about... I, I was moaning about the fact that some people were producing evergreen. That's a total evergreen. It's got nothing to do with the show. It's just a really nice piece of art that says no agenda on it, or it's got some generality or 33 or something. Mm-hmm. And it would be... And we go to those once in a while. When we can't really find anything appropriate, we'll find a good piece of evergreen. But often the artist will post the it in the regular show thing, not in the evergreen section. Right. Uh, not that you should post everything. A lot of evergreen stuff shouldn't be in there, by the way, because it's not evergreen. Evergreen... You have to understand what it means. Yeah, give it a means definition. That'll that can help. Always be used. And if it's a picture of Bill and Hillary, you know, it's probably not an evergreen. Or if it's a picture of something that just took place, some news event, and it's got it's kind of cool looking, or with AOC and something like that, is probably not an evergreen. Evergreens are something that could be used ten years from now. Exactly. And a lot of people post that type of art in the regular stream and they never put it in the evergreen and i will say that a few shows ago we used an evergreen that was at least eight years old maybe even older so yes Yes. they do get used and we do peruse it long since given up on the show he's a man overboard and we highly appreciate all the work that our artists do even if they're overboard it's still beautiful work no agenda art generator.com thank you for participating in the value for value network and along those same lines we'd like to thank our executive and associate executive producers who brought some value for today's show yes indeed in fact uh we do have a couple of high-end producers right off the bat and uh, exactly why my scrolling isn't working, I don't know. You might as well read his first name. I do have the note. It is Chuck. Chuck Oberfrank. 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 John Oberfrank. Adam, I've been listening since episode one. Yes, really. And finally donating. I used to read John's inside track column and watched Adam on Headbangers Ball. You just dated yourself, Chuck. So after many <laughs> years of not donating, I am cheap. Yeah. I'm pitching in. You can decide whether to de-douche me or not, but I still consider myself a douche for not donating for so long. I disagree. You are de-douched. You've been de-douched. I waited a number of years for a stock to pay off and thought it was the perfect time to donate. Enjoy my capital gains and don't spend it all on candy. At the Chicago Ronald McDonald House Charities event last year, I IM'd Tina the Keeper and ITM. She replied back was what was probably wondering... WTH? <laughs> no, she, she, no, she liked that, actually. I really enjoyed your coverage of the 2016 elections and find it unfortunate that you lost listeners because of your coverage. I do miss the old second half of show Alien Reports and your reports from Europe. Well, we do reports from Europe from time to time. Can you play the full Ant song and drone again at the end of the show? My two teenage boys love those jingles. They're full songs, yes. And please allow me the night name of Sir Chuck, the Oracle of Oswego. Keep up the great work. Oh, Adam, the podcast sounds amazing. Chuck Oberfrank from Oswego, yeah. Illinois. And he came in with a 1123. And then our next donor, Viscount of Moran over here, Came in with one, one, two, three, and these are both show numbers, and this is the club. Oh, they are in the club. Did because you had a Fibonacci idea going on, which I kind of right. Liked. Well, because one, one, two, three is part of this Fibonacci sequence. Right. I didn't solicit anybody to to donate that. I it was a fifty. It's the power of the Fibonacci. Of Fibonacci. It's just the power of Fibonacci. Yeah. Well, the Fibonacci thing is very strange. Always been odd. 
Anyway, it's, it has something to do with the golden rule and all the rest of these art the things. The golden you know, ratio. Like, yeah. The golden ratio. Golden ratio. Golden ratio. Viscount and Marin came with the same amount. So we actually have two club members, which is Fantastic. very rare. Fantastic. Yes. Nowadays. I'm way overdue on donations. He writes, you truly are the best podcast in the universe. Jingle. Karma for all. Viscount and Marin. You've got karma. And then comes Anonymous at $581.32, which is the Fibonacci thing again. Yep. Only the up the ante, which he did himself. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, he says, no jingles, no karma. Thank you very much. Viscount Roger Boots in Man- Mechanicsville, Iowa, 35622. He says, also improved. Now Viscount Roger Boots, see it. Uh, via or info via email to come. So he is he on the Viscount list to upgrade? I think so. Let me double check. Uh, I do not have his email. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. So put I'll him add, on there. And I I'll will see add him I there. Yes. Email. So Viscount. So it's uh, now see, uh, Roger Boots. Now Viscount. Okay. Got it. Let me see if there's an email from him that. Should have come in. Ah, there it is. Yeah, good. Uh, he sends a PDF. <laughs> Just to complicate things more. Okay, I will click on PDF and I open it. With pain. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it's just the accounting. Okay. All right. So, so there's this account. Well, you'll be Viscount. You're on the list. It's all taken care of. Thank you very much. Uh, Sir Chase McCarthy, $333.33, uh, no sense, moved 10 times in 11 years, hence call me Baron at Large. Okay, so that is also a title upgrade. Good, okay, Baron, and he will be Baron at Large. You got it. Uh, anonymous uh, in Redwood City, two hundred ninety-five dollars. He'll be our first associate executive producer. First, I'd like to remain 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 anonymous for purposes of the show. In the event it's red, this is red. Yet yeah, we read everything over two hundred dollars. I like many of your listeners have too long been a boner, and now I'm going to be a donor. I gave years ago in small amounts, but I believe them to be inconsequential. So now I'm restarting my personal night donation tracker Mm. from scratch and beginning fresh with a $295 donation courtesy of the state of California tax return. All right. I'm a millennial who started listening nearly a decade ago at about 16 years old. And while I have fallen overboard a few times since then, I'm proud to say I'm still hanging in there. You guys are an insurmountable force in more ways than one and have shaped not just my worldly outlook and way of life, but the same for scores and scores of people, I am sure. I don't I don't think either of you gentlemen or any of us producers will ever realize just how much impact you have had on the world. (laughs) Why you I like this part. This is the part where I actually I got kind of doughy eyed. It's like two guys in the corner. The show, it's the concepts, your voices, and that it, it, hitting people in the mouth with the messaging will long be felt way after all of us have moved on. That's code for when we're dead, John. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, I digress. Needless mm-hmm. to say. Uh, to work as a police officer, I go. No, right John, on. not all of us are lazy. <laughs> Although although I'm at the donut shop right now. I know you didn't say that. <laughs> although there are many of us, those people that they're – there are in any field, a lot of us, however, listen to the show. Yeah, we have a lot of police that listen to the show and military. Uh, we care about protecting the public st- <coughs> still and are silently nodding our heads with a no agenda listenership. I try my best to hit people in the mouth while I can. And also for the show. No, I'm just that's a, that's a joke. I couldn't resist. Yeah, they're great. And I have been successful, but there's always more work to be done. I, I'd appreciate a jobs karma as I'm hoping to jump into a promotion sometime in the near future. You guys are simply the fucking best. All of our lives wouldn't be the same without you in it. And he's in Redwood City. Well, that's for sure. Well, thank you very oh, much, okay. Anonymous. Also for Anonymous. To us be for us for anonymous to be in Redwood City. Well, it's nice to hear that, and thank you for sticking with us and come climbing back on board. Happy to hand out a jobs card to you. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yeah! You've got. 
Karma. Sam Garcia in Valrico, Florida, I think. Valrico. 239.25. A little over a week ago, uh, I was on a cruise ship on the way back from the Bahamas. I had been telling my girlfriend that we should go to the casino to play roulette (laughs) so we can put money on 33 (laughs) and win money for the show. (laughs) I I can already feel where this is going. (laughs) She said, sure, why not? Sure. So I sat down, bought $40 worth of chips, and the first spin I put 10 bucks on black and won five bucks. The next spin I put $25 on 33, with 33 black, and hit it for seven twenty-five. <laughs> this was my first time playing roulette. I don't think anyone can doubt the power of the magic number. Before and since then, the number 33 has followed me everywhere I go. Here's your 33%. <laughs> this is great. As an aside, have you ever heard of the author Robert Anton Wilson? He was a, coll- a colleague of Timothy Leary, and I believe the work of the concept of the concept of reality tunnels explains the dimension A, B, and C a paradigm that we live in today. Not sure where I heard the term reality tunnel could have been on the show. If you have not read any of Raw's work, I suggest his nonfiction description of Leary's model of human consciousness uh, as an eight circuit computer <laughs> uh, uh, titled Prometheus Rising. And if you want a page turning fiction uh, the, right then there's an f- infamous illuminatus trilogy that is an absolute pleasure to read i've read professor professor ted's industrial society and his future and i agree some points of of his but i prefer to believe that raw and leary hope for which is a mass enlightenment that will bring people out of the <laughs> muck of domesticated <laughs> primate lo- pri- this is hard to read by the way yeah pri- primate logic to a place of being a master. a master of your own universe. Message to the producers. Please don't put your savings on 33 black at your local casino. Well, maybe they should. Yeah, it sounds like it worked out pretty well. 33, that's a magic number. No, it is. It's the magic number. You've got karma. Thank you so much. It's funny how some... Uh, some text is just hard. I mean, I read cold, so it's always going to be up in the air. But it's funny how some text is extremely hard to read, and I'm not sure I could look at this piece of work. Well, I think, here I think if you out. you just keep practicing, you'll be fine. No, I never get to, to, I can never get that right. That one, Gary Fares, F A P H A R E S, and three four five three two three four five six. I do not have an email from him, so we assume it's a no jingle, no karma thing. It's not nothing in the note. Uh, Sir John, and it's, I looked up under his last name. Sir Jonathan of the Double Bladed Paddle in Las mm-hmm. Wages, Nevada, two ten twelve. Uh, thanks for the sanity. I humbly request moving and jobs karma for my relocation to Las Vegas from St. Louis. Hmm. Mm, it's nicer weather, that's for sure. As you well, it gets hot, and you get oh, you bring chapstick. That's my advice. <laughs> Las Vegas equals chapstick. As you read this, this I will be somewhere west of Oklahoma City. He's driving, obviously, or he's on a high-speed rail. <laughs> Any suggestions for frequencies to monitor during the way or interesting sights to see? Uh, 73 is KEO, a zero IHT, Sir Jonathan of the Double Bladed Pal, 73 is to you. Yeah. What, uh, would you have any any suggestions for Well, him? first, 73 is Kilo 5 Alpha Charlie Charlie. I'm not sure if he's talking about uh, a VHF UHF um, network with repeaters that he wants to check into. I know they, there are networks, like we have the Saltgrass Network in Texas. I would say if you have a, a the 40 meter rig, this is going to sound weird to people. You've got a 40 meter rig, then you should monitor 7290. I mean, that's kind of fun to listen to. There's a lot of people that hang out there. Uh, but you, you have to be a little more clear as to what, what you're hauling in your rig. So, Jonathan, what, ki- what, kind of, what kind of gear you got so we can help you out? You got plenty of dudes named Ben and who are hams who will, uh, who will gladly help. But we got to know what you're, uh, what you're stacking. Richard Plug is up next. $201.11 from. Uh, Amersfoort. Amersfoort, yes. Yeah, Deutsch, uh, Deutschland. Uh, <laughs> Netherlands. Holland, Dutch. Yes. 
I may be a strange it may this may be a strange request because I haven't heard anything like it in the 150 episodes of the show that I've listened to. My smoking hot wife Maria and I are going through a very rough patch right now. I will leave out the details, but please make it known that I love her and I will do anything in my might to make us happy as we were on our wedding day, as happy. Listening to you guys keeps me sane in a time when I need it the most. Therefore, please take this pittance and in return grant me a double dose of relationship goat karma, a Trump bing bing bong song, my wife loves that, and a D douching. Uh, thank you for the sanity you provide during my long commute. Now, hold on. What is different about this that makes it something he's never heard in 150 episodes? I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, this has happened before. What's ha- What's happened before? Well, the guy's looking for some relationship karma and get his act together and uh, with his lovely wife, and yeah. uh, it's not new. Yeah. Okay. I, anyway. I, I mean, I, I read this one coming in, and I'm I'm not sure exactly what we can do. And I'm also, I'm looking for the, is it ding, ding, bing, bing, bong? Yeah, it's just a bing, bong, bing, bing, bong, bong. Yeah, it's an end of show song. Well, there's a shorter version somewhere that we used on the show where he just says bing, bing, bong. It's not put the bing, music Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bong. Yeah, that. You've got <laughs> karma. Bing, bing, bong, bong, Jobs. bing, bing. Jobs, jobs, I'm giving him and everything. jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yeah! You've got <laughs> karma. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing. Okay. I hope that works. Well, he needs a de douching. And a de douching as well? Okay. You've been de douched. All right. There you go. The night of the Blue Water area in uh, Algonac, Algonac. Uh, Michigan, 200. This probably got some pronunciation issue there. Night of the Blue Water area here, requesting jobs, Karma, for an upcoming job interview. All right, good luck with that. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You've got Karma. And those are our executive producers and associate executive producers for show uh, 1123, part of a Fibonacci sequence. And it it's turned out to be a pretty good day for us. And so far as the Fibonacci is concerned, we're glad one of our Tim W came up and spotted that in advance of uh, the newsletter and uh, alerted me to this Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, and it's underway. nice. Way it's nice to have the random number sequence with our with our club members, twelve, 20, eleven, twenty three club members for uh, Chuck who'll be. Uh, I will be knighted today uh, along with uh, the Viscount of Marin. So fantastic. This, whoa, are you doing, are you making noise? Nope. Oh. oh uh, was... You blacked out and I didn't do anything. <laughs> I blacked out, man. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Thanks for waking me up, John. All right. Uh, th- thank you to all of our executive producers, our two club members, and our associate executive producers. This is exactly how it's supposed to work, and we highly appreciate your support of the work. Uh, please continue to support us at Dvorak.org slash NA. We'll have more people to thank $50 and above in our second donation segment. Dvorak.org slash NA. Well, you've got all you need to know when it comes to, I don't know, deconstructing the Mueller report up until here. Why don't you go out and our propagate? formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. All right. Oh, you know, we got some, uh, our producers. So you mentioned the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, our producers are some interesting people. I played this Madam Secretary clip on the previous show, which had uh, some FEMA numbers in here, which were really unbelievable about Typhoon Blessing. Typhoon Blessing is a freak. It's the most powerful ever two months before the official start of typhoon season. Set off alarm bells within the scientific community, so we went looking. This was taken above the monsoon trough by our new GOES-18 satellite. 
maps are like rashes. If it's big, if it's red, it's probably bad. Yeah, I'm getting hives just looking at it. Here's a patch of superheated ocean. Rising temperatures are outpacing even our worst case models, so tropical cyclogenesis is going to get more frequent, more destructive. So, blessing isn't a freak, it's the new normal. Well, there was a time when we couldn't link specific stories. Shoot, is this the wrong one? I think it's the wrong clip. I think I want No, it. this is the one you played like yesterday. Well, I had three of them. I had three it. of them, but I'm not hearing the... Th well, well, let's see uh, if it's in there. Climate change, but that time is Yeah, cyclogenesis in there. Which brings us to Nauru. No, 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 no. I think it's I think it's this one I wanted. I mean, have you seen yeah. these FEMA numbers? This is what I want. 250 mile an hour winds are going to destroy 95% of single family dwellings with the force of 20,000 Hiroshima's. Not to mention... That's what it was. The force of 20,000 Hiroshima's. By the way, that's now just a verb. Hiroshima's. It's not Hiroshima bomb. Hiroshima's. It's just Hiroshima's. Uh, so the first yeah. note comes from J42. Uh, enjoy the show as usual. Um, the segment you did on Madam Secretary's show and the hurricane BS tickled my engineer brain, so I took to the webs to check some numbers. Uh, about five minutes worth of clicking later, I came up with these. And anyway, so he has all these calculations and uh, based upon the kilotons of TNT, the little boy atomic bomb, exactly how much TNT that was, and then the kinetic energy of hurricanes. TNT equivalency. Equivalency, yes. Using uh, NOAA's calculations based on hurricanes from 81 to 99, a typical hurricane releases between four and six orders of magnitude, depending on calculation method, uh, or put another way, between 10,000 and 1 million times more energy than little boy did. So... A hurricane that released 20,000 times more energy than Hiroshima would be a fairly typical storm. <laughs> I'm not sure what, if any, conclusions to draw from this other than, as usual, TV and Al Gore don't seem to be bothered to do actual any actual research before throwing around the facts. So that was the first one. Then we got a note from Eric, and he actually supplied a, a nice little uh, JPEG with all of his calculations. He says, this Hiroshima atomic bomb global warming meme keeps coming up, so I finally got curious enough to do some back-of-the-napkin calculations. I love how these guys say that. They got, like, crazy symbols I've never seen before in my life. I'm not a meteorologist, and I'm not an expert on this, but I'm a chemical engineer, so I do have some standing in these types of calcs. See attached screenshot for what I come up with. Hopefully my annotations make enough sense. Basically, Al Gore is full of crap, and by his fear-mongering estimates, we would be increasing 2 to 3 degrees Celsius per year. That's the 400 or 500,000 Hiroshima's. Curiously, the estimate on Madam Secretary of 20,000 Hiroshima's per day fits perfectly with the IPCC estimate of 1.5 degrees Celsius in 12 years. Seems like too much of a coincidence to me. He shakes our nerves and he rattles our brains. Too much of carbon drives us all insane. We'll be submerged, but that's absurd. Goodness gracious, Al Gore's a liar. A carbon tax, and he thought it was funny. He came along because he wanted our money. Get in line, just pay the fine. Goodness gracious, Al Gore's a liar. <laughs> Full version at the end of the show. Uh, that's uh, Jesse Coy Nelson. Yeah, so how about that? The 20,000 Hiroshima's a day is kind of an average storm. And if you had that every single day, then you would get to your 1.2 degrees Celsius increase over 12 years. Good work, Lear Foundation. Yeah, they, they, was somebody there, they had their... Somebody did the work. Yeah, somebody did, did the, the work. The same calculation our guy did. Yeah. And they said, boy, it's this Al Gore number, we can't use it. Because I'm sure at the beginning of their of their script they had five hundred thousand i'm sure they did yeah yeah they're gonna drop the five hundred thousand <laughs> and then somebody said you know you want to back off on that yeah, just a, just a little bit number, which, yeah yes and they nailed the right number exactly that's funny <laughs> well i caught something i think is gonna you had one earlier at the end of the beginning mm -hmm. uh catchphrase i haven't i this is one i think i might be early on but i think you're going to be able to pick up on it there's this uh, this was from i had this with the last show and i forgot to run it this is the illegal voters clip and what uh, this is is uh nancy pelosi uh there's a they're trying to the democrats would like to make it so illegal aliens who have been changing their names from, you know, illegal aliens to undocumented, or whatever it is. To dreamers. Uh, they want them to be able to vote <laughs> in California. Sure. And every place else. At 16. So they can get, 
What? Sorry? Vote and at 16. Just vote vote anytime. Oh, Come yeah. On vote in. Six, six, <laughs> when you're 16 that's and you're illegal. Part. You're 16 so and illegal. It's fine. Yeah, no, let's let these people vote. They're living here, so they might as well have some input. So, but there's a but there's a but there's a cute little change of term of uh, nomenclature. You'll catch it. So is the left trying to protect voter rights or are they just looking for ways to add names to Democrats? Democrats are pushing a bill that would grant voting rights to illegal immigrants ahead of the 2020 election. When we talk about newcomers, we have to recognize the constant reinvigoration of America that they are. And these newcomers make America more American. And that means not suppressing the vote of our newcomers to America. Gee, could it be um, newcomers? Is that is that the new term? <laughs> I was wondering if you could catch that. Isn't that something that that, that from the the movie V or from the series V? Didn't they call them the newcomers or the newlings or the the newbies? Let's oh, just call that's them the possible. Newbies. I, I just don't call know. somebody out there who is a fan of that show would know. We should just call them the newbies. Uh, newbies. <laughs> newbies. Newbies. Hey, you a newbie? <laughs> Next. You a newbie? So they've gone from illegal alien to undocumented worker. Always <laughs> worker, by the way. Or undocumented citizen, maybe they used that. Oh, they were visit. They were newcomers. In V, they were visitors. I'm sorry, they were visitors. visitors, That could be next. They don't use that. (laughs) That could be next. (laughs) But this newcomers thing. I mean, does she really think that that's going to fool anybody? Yes, because I'm. I'm going to use newbies. I'm just. I'm just taking it. I'm taking it from her. Hey, newbie. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course she thinks that's going to work. Right after they get rid of the electoral college. Yeah, another pipe dream. Well, there's an interesting. Uh, the media is behind it. I, you've read my essay, which you know, I we promoted. didn't we didn't bring this up, and I would like to bring it up now since you wrote this essay 14 years ago. Yeah, and you already uh, predicted you are from the future, and and by the way, it's on the Cosmic Weenie server, so we know it's from the future. It was written in the future. And you predicted the demise of the Electoral College. Well, maybe not the demise, but that this would be something they wanted to get rid of. And your your assertion, and it's a show assertion over the years, has become a show assertion, is because the the big states like California, who really, you know, there's no reason to spend any advertising money there because it's always the Democrats who win. Yeah. So you got to spread out the dough. My thinking has got nothing to do with the reasons for getting rid of the Electoral College. My reason has always been the same reason that they were never going to do campaign finance reform because the who gets the money when there's like a billion dollars goes into a campaign? Who gets who eventually gets that money? Well, the, the big, eventual. Yeah, the eventual target for the money is the media. The CBS big, gets the money. ABC gets the money. New York Times gets the money. If you look at, and, um, uh, what is it? Not Is it Broadcast Magazine? No, not Broadcast Magazine. What's the a- advertising age? If you look at advertising age, their biggest addition is when they have the numbers on political spend. And that yeah. and they, and they and the, it's all that it's about is who's spending money, which consultants have the money, because that's how it works. All these all these consultants they get they actually get a piece of the media buy they're incentivized yeah. to spend more on media because they get a piece of the action the way the advertising agencies used to were probably right, still do usually. with the media placement yeah so it's a bonanza and we're, yeah, we're it's a bonanza yeah. so so the media is not going to get on board ever for campaign finance no, reform no because it's right. Why don't you just shoot yourself in the foot? You don't have enough money as it is the way you see it. Mm-hmm. So the media is not going to do anything. And people who are stupid enough to write editorials that the campaign finance reform is important usually get fired from that media outlet because it's a dumb thing to say. Now, the same with the Electoral College. This is not about holding on to the money you're getting or increasing the amount of money you're getting. That's No, it's, it's not about holding out. It's about increasing. And you can increase the amount of money you're getting by opening up some new markets. California got no spend whatsoever from the Trump campaign no. because it was money wasted. Yeah. So they would get no money. There was I never saw a Trump for president ad during the entire campaign. It just didn't happen because why would you, why would you run a Trump for president campaign? They're not going to get these electoral votes. Uh, so they just gave up on it. And in fact, the 4 million differential, it was over 4 million differential in California 
Hillary over Trump, that accounted for the popular vote. The popular vote was less. The popular vote of Hillary, that the amount over what Trump got, was less than what California delivered to her because Trump did not put any effort into California whatsoever, including advertising, or even he tried to show up to a couple of events. He was shouted down. He just said, screw California. So he never did anything. So, and that accounts for all this popular vote nonsense. If there was no electoral college, things would be different because they'd be spending money like crazy everywhere. Well, the media would clean up. This would be a bonanza. Uh, only in certain states. You'd only need about nine states. You wouldn't need much well, else. Yeah, but those are huge states, and they'd be yeah. spending a lot of money. They're still yeah. going to spend money in the other states. Yeah. They're not going to pull back. I am. I am. Gonna dem- they're going to put more money in the campaign. I'm surprised by people like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker who speak, and Elizabeth Warren who speak so cavalierly of, "Oh, it's got to go." And like, look, we're we're the United States of America, not the United Peoples of America. It is a it's a constitutional republic, so. You know, it's it's one thing if, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense what they're saying. And and I, I don't think they really mean it. They don't really don't want the Electoral Warren College gone, do says. they? They don't really want, I mean, the whole point of this is to stop the United States, the way we run our elections is so that it isn't just New York and California and Illinois and mainly Chicago who vote and determine everything. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. The the couple of farmers, I'm just saying couple of farmers in Iowa, wherever they are, who feed the country, they have a, it's equalized to the electoral college because they're important too. It's really the the whole idea of intersectionality in voting is between the states is in this concept. And it's so cavalierly dismissed. I think also the college admission scandal has something to do with it i believe that people are so inundated with media and they're so dense and it's like molasses syrupy shit in their heads that go passes for brains they hear <laughs> cheating college admission electoral college yeah we should get rid of that I'm, i tell you that happens to people they're so stupid i think we've i think we've concluded that for yeah. years yeah I, well it's sad what are you now? Excuse me. What are you doing? I'm getting a lozenge. I'm getting a dry. Okay. Well, can you announce that before you make that? I thought you were on fire. Oh, look, the, the Zephyr just went by. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, um, I'm gonna. While you're looking at the time, I'm gonna go down under. A special guest showed up in uh, New Zealand, although. Not showing up at the mosque, uh, not showing up to pay any respects, really just to play some some golf. And there's a kicker at the end of this clip. Speculation is rife that former U.S. President Barack Obama is set to touch down in New Zealand this evening. Much of Barack Obama's whirlwind visit this week is shrouded in secrecy. There are reports the former U.S. president will arrive in Auckland or in the Upper North Island by private jet this evening. While here, Obama is set to play two rounds of golf with Sir John Key at a secret location in Northland. <laughs> One option deemed fit for a president is the world-class course in Coldy Cliffs at Matoldi Bay. Obama's plans on Thursday are far from secret, with his attendance expected at a porphyry at Government House and at an invite-only event in Auckland here that night. He's due to leave for Australia on Friday. It's understood Obama's visit is being co-sponsored by in New Zealand, Westpac and MasterCard. Oh, man. The guy's got MasterCard flying around the world to play golf. That's wow. nice. Well done, Barack. That's nice. And they, and, they an- the moss. and they announce it. No, I don't think so. And they announce it on the news. It's sponsored by MasterCard. This American president. I mean, it's sometimes it feels like we're living in, you know, like, terminator this american president proudly brought to you by mastercard just as he was we're, during the we're election judge dread where <laughs> all restaurants are taco bell <laughs> precisely yeah barack obama is presented by mastercard don't leave home without it oh wait that's american express yeah all right so i have a couple of things here um i have a lot of clips called nutballs let me guess 
are these this is this the the mom daughter combo? Yes. <laughs> the keeper pointed that out to me a few days ago, and at first I couldn't. I'm like, what is is she playing the theremin? What is going on with this? <laughs> Didn't it look like she's playing the theremin? Well, they're both doing the same. With the 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 daughter. You got to explain this. You got to explain what's going okay. on here. There's these two McGillicuddy people. Wait, McGillicuddy people? What does that well, mean? Well, that's kind of their names. Uh, let's get their names so I don't have their name written down. I should. Uh, now, let me. Uh, I'm going to Google this like this. You can get Bing it, hopefully. Mom. Yeah, I Bing it. Mom, daughter, nutball, <laughs> um, <laughs> YouTube. And then I, that's all I need to put in, I think, and I'll yeah. get it. By the way, it was Demolition Man, not Judge Dredd. Oh, I thought it was Judge Dredd. Oh, yeah. Demolition Man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Troll Room. Well, curious I didn't get these two on the, the, the simple search. What are you anyway, looking for, these, man? There's these two women. They they run a – well, hey, here's the background on them. This will take care of it. Let's run the background first because I think WUSA or one of these stations picked up on this, and they did the bio and the background of the two. So this bio and background of the nutball two. Uh, hold on. I'm looking for it. Bio, B-I-O. Oh, it's up the top. I got it. The daughter uh, graduated from NYU and is a faith healer for horses. The mother, Lynn McGonigal, is the founder and teaching channel of the Lightworkers Healing Method. She was, she was a, a CPA. Healing. Yeah, she was a CPA at Price Waterhouse. Uh, that's how she first started out, where she was the controller with a two hundred million dollar manufacturing company, and she what? was a partner in another CPA account mm. firm. But she left it all in order to train. Nope. She's invested twenty three years in training with higher dimension avatars. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, she. What, what exactly is this show that I'm listening to? <laughs> This is one of those morning, wow. uh, right-wing morning shows. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Show. I want that job. Oh, wow. It has worked with thousands of clients in this, and she's taught up unique and powerfully angelically guided energy healing art through oh, a wow. progressive series of exper- experiential weekend workshops at various locations. That's true. <laughs> but here's the thing. She, you might be able to catch her locally. She has something called the Angelic Initiative. What? It's an all-volunteer organization. They are on a mission to trigger the awakening now. That's in capital letters. I don't even understand anything you've said so far. Now you know how I feel when millennials talk. That's true. We <laughs> we conduct angelically guided multidimensional energy healing sessions in Washington, D.C. to heal the root causes of warfare and and trigger the awakening whose time has surely come. And they are in the process of compiling footage of their work in the Capitol. Okay. Let me just understand. So this is, it is a mother daughter combo. I'm, I'm led to believe. Yep. And, and they are trying to heal the energy of the swamp. And by awakening people to uh, the war and everything and to heal them, so to stop it. Is this kind of the idea? Yeah, it doesn't. When you listen to them, it doesn't seem to be what they're about. Oh. And in fact, I'll put the one clip I want to start with. And they're all fairly short, except this one's the longest. This is Nutball 00, two nuts on population control. Extreme biohazard data from the deeper, denser dimensions. And so it is an extreme biohazard to make justifications for parasitism. That's true. It isn't okay. Friends, we have enough humans on the planet. We don't need any more humans. It is not okay for women to have babies and stop contributing to the process under the pretense that they're doing a good thing by staying home and raising children. We don't need children. If you find yourself pregnant, there are options, and you can have an abortion. No babies. Cut off the baby factories. We have 7.5 billion with a B humans on the planet. That's too much. The actual ideal amount seems to be under 1 billion. That's under true. 1 billion. We have 7.5 billion. No babies. Women who have babies and stay home to raise them should not be viewed as doing a good thing. That's not a good thing. It's completely not what the situation calls for at all. I'm sorry. 
find another way to contribute and be valued. That's not a good way. I'm sorry. Uh, do they have a GoFundMe or a Patreon that I can contribute to? They don't to? need it. They make a lot of money. They do? So, How do they make money? I believe so. If you if you check her out, she does a lot of healing things, and she's in Washington, D.C., making her fortune. Okay. Now, the the lifting of the, the – the two of them have their arms in the air, but the, the younger one, who's obviously the mom hates – uh, she had a baby, obviously, and this girl, and the girl can't even say anything except that's true, that's true, that's true. In fact, they even isolated. I got an ISO of it. That's true. And you could throw it into our, you can read, play the ISO. Uh, uh, this one, yes. That's true. <laughs> that's all she, so she's like diamond and silk. That's all she does. That's true. She just says that's true. That's true. Now, she does say stuff once in a while. And when she says something, I'd say 90% of the time, the old lady shuts her down and says no and tells her no. And, and this was this was during a moment where she explained the arm in the air thing. What she's doing is she's pulling the strands of uh, imaginary strands of anger and fatigue and mm-hmm. you know, every bad thing in your, that you have. You're pulling it out of your body and you're holding it into the air and throwing it away. Mm-hmm. And, you, and so she's doing that constantly. Mm-hmm. And the, the old lady does it once in a while too. And when the daughter explained this, the old lady, she, the daughter says, I invite, you can all do this yourself. You can pull the, f- the fatigue and f- frustrations and the things about life out of your body and throw them in the air. And the old lady says, no, you can't. It's too late for them. No. And then shuts her down and makes her just continue with her. That's true. That's true. But it's this, uh, and she obviously hates the daughter and doesn't want her to have babies <laughs> or she wouldn't go on and on about this. You know, we just have to stop having babies, and which it seems to be what they're mostly about, except for the fact that they talk to the plants and the shrubs and the trees. But let's play this clip, which is another one. And I try to get that number out of them, which is the classic uh Half a billion people max that you should have on. The, oh, on the, the Georgia Guidestones right? number five hundred thousand yeah, people. The Georgia Guidestones. So yeah. here I found it, and one, I, I, my daughter was giving me grief for. I listened to many, many, many of these, and I found this one. This is a classic on one of their shows. This is the. the, the this one is the two nuts on mosquitoes. We're faced with this Hobson's choice of, as a collective, deciding to live gentler on the land. That's true. Not being so poisonous, like letting the mosquitoes flourish so that the birds can flourish, so that the mammals can flourish, so that all life can flourish. That's true. (laughs) Or just having fewer of us so that we can live in our destructive way that we so love and the collective still survive. That's true. And really, we think that that would be the gentler choice, somebody is saying. Yeah, that I it would them. be gentler to simply uh, reduce the numbers back to that which is sustainable. And probably it's half a billion because there's disagreement over half a billion or two billion. Yeah, that's true. And <laughs> usually that means it's the more uh, inconvenient answer the less convenient answer that's actually true and that oh, we're just having true. a hard time coming to grips with it so probably that's what's going on that's true this is some next level illuminati shit you're bringing to the table john my god for 25 years they've been growing babies and cows that's true that's true that's now, true this is another so that so i got the that's pretty much their thesis about things now i want to uh, play i have two more short clips of them uh, I have other. I have other. Do you have a uh, conclusion about this, or are you taking me somewhere with this on this uh, journey? Yeah, I, this is the conclusion I'm drawing. That this is the this is a modern Democrat. <laughs> That's true. I need that. I, I need that thing. Hold on. Now I need it all the time. That's true. That's true. I got to put this. I got to put this in somewhere. I need this. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> this is the modern Democrat, they, and this is the same thing about the popular. No, don't have babies. AOC yeah, pushed that. Yeah, all okay. These people I'm with that you. Are the Beto people, all these guys, is, they're all talking about the same kind of thing as these guys. That's now, true. Now this one here, this one here is not quite a, a Beto O'Rourke clip, but I just think it's funny because there's a there is a great 
little ISO in here, which I, I put as the ISO. Yes, yes, yes. But this is the nut balls. Two nuts on how we agreed to life. Now, this is what she's, she's channeling this from some beings in different dimensions. And she says, before we were born, we've already agreed to the terms of our life. And we have to, like, stay with it. That's true. Patients occurred before birth. It's a very long process. And once you're in the life, you don't get to change. That's true. That, that's not how the system works. You <laughs> said you would do it. You signed. They said, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? At least three times. We said, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and now it's time to do it. Now it's just time. It's go time. It's do it time. And the entire life, the entire sentience is go time and do it time. That's true. For all of us in all <laughs> dimensions no exceptions amen <laughs> that's true you said yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> okay this is gold to me now i got the last one now, this one go back to the political the democrat style of how, just the way democrats see things you know the, the and and you bring the nazis she brings the nazis in she does all the mm. stuff that everyone's doing uh the aoc in particular that whole uh, justice democrat group and this is the nutballs two it says two posing i don't know it says p o s i i n g the earth i got it we're killing our planet that's true killing the planet it's, it's true on all of our records it's time to speak up. What are we waiting for? This is so much the same pattern as what played out in Germany during World War II, and not just Germany, but Germany and the surrounding countries. That's true. <laughs> this is what played out where during the Nazi era, a great wrong was being done. And in hindsight, we can all see that that was a great wrong. That's true. But the people who were carrying it out did not see that it was a great wrong or ignored that it was a great wrong. That's true. And the people who didn't speak up were participatory in the process because they weren't speaking up. And the same thing is happening here. That's this true. This species has stolen a biosphere and is in the midst of the great species extinction and die-off. We're slaughtering all other lives. That's true. Fact check? True. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, so this is your modern Democrat, and they're making a lot of money, you say? I believe they are. Now, the other examples of modern Democrats are different, and I have two more clips which don't involve these two. And, but by the way, I recommend anyone to dig these two up, and you could watch. This is the most entertaining. They've already done over a 1,000 podcasts, video podcasts with their arms in the air and swinging around. Uh the other thing that's going on, again, Democrats, this Mary Magdalene thing, which I have yet to deconstruct or understand why Mary Magdalene is such a big deal. And there's a bunch of people online. YouTube is fabulous for this, by the way. And I use that word uh, cautiously. For these channelers. And I don't have long clips of these channelers, but you can get a kind of an idea of how it works. This is one of them. Um, this is Nutball's contacting mary oh, all right message from mary i cannot wait for this i can't wait i can't wait okay all right i'm just relaxing my shoulders <sighs> closing my eyes and letting my attention my focus go deep within my heart space <sighs> i'm not leaving me i'm not going out of body i'm connecting with another band of light literally like we said with the invisible spectrum of light and the visible spectrum of light that that mary consciousness is like another um, layer of it that we really all can access we all can feel connected to and personally a part of so it's not i'm not going outside of myself i'm not disconnecting from my higher self what i'm doing is inviting the consciousness of mary magdalene into the library the the god consciousness that i'm connecting with as just in my human so I'm like a um, the broadcaster for a signal that's that's much much broader than just what we look at as a, as one soul we're so much more than that you guys that was the dark age that was the dark age yeah I'm, I'm not really against this kind of new age stuff you know I, I don't really care yeah, you know, you're kind of into it actually well I'm just trying to figure out you know you're taking a long time here to make a lot I of just, women well, seem I'm stupid just, I'm recognizing just what it is it's a this is the this is the modern Democrat party that's true 
Now, I had the last clip, which is this one. This is Sarah Larson. That was Jill something. Or other. This is a doctor. She calls herself doctor. I only played the very first of this one because she goes on and on with key codes and bringing different people in. But I want you to just listen to this and imagine that wo- that woman in the green screaming out, no, after Trump was elected. <laughs> and you know these are all the same people. Ah, OK, I see where you're going. This is like crazy snowflakes going nuts. These are enlarged, it's, enlarged they're, amygdalas. They're, they're a little more. Uh, I can't say they're going nuts. It's just that it's just that it's just a strange to me. It is strange to me, and especially I do not get the Mary Magdalene connection. What is the, what is it about her? Oh, I know. That's uh, it's easy. She could have children without a man. No, but that's not that's Mary. That's not Mary Magdalene. Oh, Mary Magdalene. Oh no, I don't know what that connection is. It's spiritual, man. If we could just open our hands to open our feeling nature, our divine knowing, and open to the first key code to anchor this space in preparation for the Mary Magdalene transmission. And that would be key code one, she of a thousand names. We welcome in Isis. What? So so So, uh, so how did uh, Isis is, of course, uh, the female goddess of what is it? Uh, sun, strong, strength, something. Yeah, we, 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 we lose track of these. So things. They're, oh, she that's gets Isis and then somebody else and somebody else. I think five is finally Mary Magdalene. Then she brings a sixth person in with a key, key code. code number six. Yeah. And then she starts singing and wailing. Uh, mm. This is the Democrat Party. Well, I this have... is the people that that have, are responsible for the the ruination of Seattle, <clears throat> people crapping on the streets and everything else. <clears throat> I don't think this is a minority of people. There are like tens of thousands of aficionados of these folk You're looking for some something other than the misery they have on a day to day basis. They don't want to have babies. They're like AOC, they're being manipulated by other people. I mean, this is to me. I just think I just, for a moment, tapped into this, and I now I extract myself. Well, yes, stepping the, backwards slowly. Yes. I do want to know that you're okay after yeah. after pursuing this. Yeah, I didn't. You know, as far as I got was just like <laughs> this is too nuts for me. <laughs> well, I I think it's it's definitely uh, you may be onto something here. I'd like to see some of these people sitting on the council. Or somewhere in office where they're doing this, that would that would make me feel much better about uh, the connection with the, with the new Democrat Party. But for sure, we need to find out the Mary Magdalene, who was a whore, correct? Mary Magdalene was a whore. No, well, that would be the bad. That would be like the, the bad interpretation definition. But it's it seems like these are people struggling uh, who need a belief in something, and, and this is where religion has come in for hundreds of millions, billions of people. They have religion, and this seems to be some kind of odd hybrid nature religion thing. Yeah, pantheism might be a the yes. word for it. The the two women, the mom and daughter act, uh, they seem to be pantheists because they one of the whole. I have a whole series of clips where she's talking to the grass and the trees, and <laughs> right. somehow talks to the dead trees. Okay, we're, and we're, shames yeah. the living trees into blaming them for the dead trees. We're going and to it goes to, on and on like that. We're going to have to cut you off from YouTube for a little while, John. This this is clear. She said, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's true. Pew, 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 pew. pew. That's true. Here's a story of a bunch of snowflakes Who were trampling on some other people's rights All of them lived at home with their mother They wanted to start fights I'm gonna show my support by donating to No Agenda Imagine all the people who could do that Oh yeah, that'd be fab Yeah, on No Agenda Yeah, we do have some people to thank for our Fibonacci show, one, one, two, three. Um, being starting with Viscount Sir Donald Borowski in Spokane Valley. Hold on, he did send it. Wow, man! You, all right, so you really for for Sunday show, you really got to do something about the chair. It's off the hook now. 
Okay. Just a little bit of ranch hand or WD-40, especially when you went to get something. That was like, maybe that's maybe you should join those women and try that chair noise on them. Maybe they'll like that. You know, and you can channel something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's Barofsky. Barofsky didn't really send this. In. He's usually sending stuff on official letterhead, but he did send something interesting enough that I want to read. Uh, he is, the, of course, the Viscount of Eastern Washington. A few weeks ago, there was a question of quantum computing. Ah, yes. He sent in a very interesting article. People can look it up. It's on the IEE spectrum on qu- quantum, quantum computing. And uh, I, just to summarize the, the article, quantum computing is bull crap. <laughs> Just want to mention that. Okay, okay thanks. Martin McIntyre in, and by the way, Borowski was in for one, two, three, four, five. Martin McIntyre in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, one hundred dollars and thirty-eight cents. And he has a douchebag call out to Doug J from South Philly. Douchebag. Ten years he's been listening, never donated. All right, Martin, thanks for pointing that out. Kilia Diosarin, 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 Diosarin. I guess. I don't know. $100.33. Uh, he needs a job karma. We'll give you that at the end. Just take the jobs karma. Uh, Ian Field, 100. Knight of the Vector Realm. Our buddy, uh, no jingles needed, obviously. You're not going to get one anyway. If, at 88.88. With, that's a great donation. Sir Greg of Parts Unknown, 8008. Uh, Christopher Harab. Barak, Harabarak, Harabarak. I guess you don't pronounce the C at the beginning. In Pickering, Ontario. The C is silent. Huh. I wonder what kind of a name that is. Thomas Miller, 7378, Naperville. No, 7378s. 7378s. Keep it the great work, he says. John Fletcher. Hey, Fletcher. Fletcher! 6969. In Hughes Springs, Texas. He says, in the morning and such. (laughs) Could you you please say on the air? So we have to do this for Fletcher. Oh, he has his own podcast. Okay. Tune in to the hog story. Oh, no. (laughs) Tune in to hog story. The trendiest podcast in the universe. Hosted by John Fletcher and Carolyn Blaney. Monday night at 7 Central. Go to Hog Story. Now. And leave a voicemail no, at right. 430-201-4841. <laughs> Let me try this. Place. Tune in to Hog Story. Hog Story. The trendiest podcast in the universe. In the universe. Hosted by John Fletcher and Carolyn Blaney. Fletcher and Carolyn Blaney. Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. Central, Central, Central. Go to hogstory.net. Leave a voicemail at 430-201-4841. Hog Story. Hog Story. Well, that's how you do a jingle. Hog man. story. That's how you Hog do it. Hog story. Yeah, you know, don't try to pile on, man. I did it right. Nicholas Thanks, Fletch. Nicholas Bossler, <laughs> 6878. Another one in red here. Psycho and dummy. Oh, yeah, this guy. <laughs> uh, I knew somebody would come out of the woodwork. I guess we do have a few people that go to or went to UCLA when I condemned them. Oh, okay. So now we're psycho I and still dummy. Need a deep douching sent you super superior Berkeley Bears forgot to de douche me last time I donated. I'll give him the de douching, but I have nothing to do with this. I I didn't disparage anyone at UCLA. Well, you can give him a de douching anyway. <laughs> You've been de douched. Okay. Uh, that's Vossler. All right, Vossler. UCLA. John Boyd, 6877. Wait, here's Psycho and Dummy UCLA guy he's number two. He's the other guy. Yeah, he's UCLA. His... <laughs> My counterpart, Psycho and Dummy UCLA guy number one, Nicholas, decided to donate a joint 137.55 and two separate donations as an homage to a petty war. <laughs> Between Cal and UCLA, the 55 cents for the amount of titles Cal has, and the 137 represents the amount of UCA, UCLA titles we'll have by the end of the year. Okay, he says, although you're probably correct, we do have more dummies. Your smart people are so influenced by the MSM world uh, that they 
who are influencing our dummies. Okay. <laughs> Boom, he goes. <laughs> hey, I think you and these UCLA guys and those two women, I think y'all should have a meetup in California. Meet yeah. And then uh, it's true. And you should get some energy work going because I think you all could it's use true. that. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Bobby Curiel in Pahala, Hawaii. Uh, 5813. Calls for a de douche. <laughs> You've been de douched. Sir Midnight of the Rivers in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Now, 50, these, these are actually now, all. These are, I'm going to read these one yeah. after another. This is the Fibonacci Fibonacci's request. Yeah. Explain, explain yeah. how this worked because 1123, the next numbers in the Fibonacci sequence of Fibonacci numbers is 5813. Is that what it was? Well, no, it would be five, I think one, three, something. Fibonacci is the way it works. We have zero, one, one, two, three, and every number after that is the, the and then five, and then eight. Eight, then 13. And then, uh, and what you do with a Fibonacci is you got, you start with zero, one. Those are the first two numbers. So the next number would be the addition of those two numbers, which is one. And then you, you, you add the numbers before the, the next number, so it's one got plus it. one, you get two. Then right. you get two plus one is three. And then three plus two is five. And then five plus three is eight. And it goes on, it starts to increase. Uh, and that's what the sequence, how the sequence works. It, and this is it. where it was just cut off. Okay, so this, yeah, yeah, because eight. it's one, one, two, three, then five, eight, one, three. Got it. Okay, makes total sense. Uh, okay, here's the people, name and location for the 5813 donations, which helped our show quite a bit. Magic. It's magic. Isis. <laughs> uh, Sir Midnight of the Rivers in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Nathan Lee Miller Foster in Boston, Massachusetts. Matthew Davis in Blackwood, New Jersey. Brian Ward. Brad Doherty in Yardley, Pennsylvania. Sir Whoop That Ass. Parts unknown. Cheryl Coppola in New Haven, Connecticut. John Aiken, Anders Edqvist, Tony Tanzi, Paul Den Bridgen, Eileen sent in, in Holland. I think it's Eileen Paul Den Brayen. I think it would be Brayen. Brayen, Brayen. Yeah. Eileen Soar. Eileen Soar. Well, that's an interesting pronunciation. Um, parts unknown. Corwin Underwood. Robert, and he's in Hamilton, on uh, Ohio. Robert Marsh, parts unknown. Ted Creamer in Scotts Valley. Radu Pertuck, parts unknown in Stowe, Vermont. Tim White, Gary Howell, Sir Ray Jacobson, he's in Ashland, Virginia. Uh, Daniel Hollinsworth, Gregory Lewis, Sir Mike Kleckner, KD2, FDX, 73, 73 New Jersey. And oh, by the way, he's down to this. That, that's the end of our list. Sir Mike Kleckner is in Ewing, New Jersey, and donated 5467. Uh, Clay Alchemist, 5332. Mary, just plain Mary in uh, Burlingame, and she did send a note in, a very nice little card, actually. And it was a um, very nice card. You only use my first name. I would have wished my friend Kyle, we got the birthday on the list. Thank you for keeping me company on my frequent drives to Southern California. I would love to meet John at a peninsula meetup one day. We'll do a peninsula meetup one day. Or in Southern California. Uh, and then the following people are $50 donors. Just name and location if we have them. Uh, Ann Cook, 50. Well, hold on. Ann, hold on one second. Ann does need procreation karma. We'll give that to her at the end. Also, call out my hubby Matt as a douchebag. Douchebag. Does that help with the procreation karma by calling your man out as a douchebag? Let us know. Yeah, let us know how that works out. <clears throat> Daniel Mayak, 50. Uh, Alexa Delgado in Aptos. Sir Ryan Thomas of Muslims for Trump in Austin, Texas. Huh. He's got a birthday. We do have it on the list. Yes. Michael Kaufman in Hillsboro, Oregon. Kenneth Lindbergh in Miami, Florida. Julian Robbins in Aptos, California. Patrick, Sir Patrick Maycom in New York City. And last but not least, Baron Sir Alan Bean in Oakland, California. I want to thank all these folks for supporting us and making show 1123, the Fibonacci show, uh, <laughs> possible. Yes. And uh, Sir Ryan Thomas of Muslims for Trump. Let's, uh, let's have a coffee. I'd like to learn. Man, not so much about Trump. I'd like to learn about the Muslims for Trump. 
and maybe some Muslim stuff in general. I feel woefully, woefully inadequate in my my Islam uh, and Muslim training and background. And if you're in Austin, that sounds good. All right, uh, an interesting interesting mix today. Very different types of donations, different people coming in. Uh, people asking for deducings, meaning they're new. That's great to see. Uh, we have more under $50. We leave those out specifically. $50 is the cutoff. A lot of people like to donate. Uh, in fact, I see a couple here, forty nine ninety nine. That's specifically so that they're uh, kept anonymous, and that's understandable in some cases. But look at this list. we got some great executive producers, associate executive producers. Also, thank you to people under 50 who are on our subscription list. It's highly appreciated. It keeps everything going. And I've got some jobs karma for the people who need it, some human resource karma, and a reminder to check us out on The Sunday Show. We sometimes do something fun, and you can support us at Vorak.org. Slash N A Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You've got <laughs> Karma. And the month is moving along just swimmingly. The 24th of March, 2019. Birthdays for today. Mary says happy birthday to her friend Kyle. He turns 34 on the 28th. Well in time for that, Mary. Dude named Ben Animus says happy birthday to his son. Dude named Alex. He turned 33 on the 21st. We say happy birthday. Sir Ryan Thomas will be turning 30 uh, today. And Lorraine Radcliffe, she celebrated on March 22nd. Happy birthday from everybody here at the No Agenda Podcast. Two title changes today, sir. Chase McCarthy ups his the ante, becomes a uh, baron at large, and that is thanks to another total of $1,000 uh, extra donated to the show. And Sir Roger Boots becomes the Viscount of Marin. Congratulations to both of you. And we do have one knighting to take care of, so I shall get out my blade. Put down the recorder. Get, get, get your... Got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, got it. Uh, yes, there it is, okay. Chuck Oberfrank, step on up, Chuck. Thank you very much for your contribution, the amount of $1,000 or more to the best podcast in the universe. That gives you a coveted seat at the round table, which is pretty big these days with all of our knights and dames. And, of course, I pronounce the K, the Sir Chuck, the Oracle of Oswego. For you, my friend, we have hookers and blow, rent boys and chardonnay. We got cookies and vodka, warm beer and cold women, taquitos and taquilla, single malt scotch, early times and BF4. We got horsehead pumpkin ale. We got harlots and haldol, pepperoni roll. Rolls and pale ale, geishas and sake, vodka and vanilla, bong hits and bourbon, sparkling cider and escorts, ginger ale and gerbils, breast milk and pablum, and mutton and mead. It's all ready for you at noagendanation.com slash rings. Uh, give your info to Eric the Shill. He'll get that off to you as soon as humanely possible. And remember to tweet it out and let us know. And for all of you new executive producers, associate executive producers, now also consider putting those credits into your... Um, your um, resume or right there on LinkedIn, Twitter handle, uh, display it loud and proud. That is also a part of hitting people in the mouth when they ask you, what the hell is going on? What is that about? Let them know. What are you doing there with that thing there? Baron, That's Baron true. what? It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. All right. Let me see. I got, a, I, I got something that's been bugging me. All right. It's this thing, you know, about you know, this battle. I, I blame... Partly blame Trump for this, but he continues a never-ending battle with the dead John McCain. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, I would say. Uh, I would say and he's. It's it's not. It's it, I think it's poor form to keep doing. Yeah. Everyone I hear is like, "Could we just stop with the McCain thing?" I, and I, then, of course, now HBO's got a special coming out with McCain, and there's a bunch of tweets. I saw this tweet. There's a picture of McCain. This is interesting. I didn't know this. But McCain, there's a picture of McCain before he got captured with his first wife, who's a pretty blonde. I mean, she's very bubbly looking and just dynamite. Mm -hmm. And he goes and gets captured and comes back from Vietnam, proposes to a woman 18 years younger than her while still married. And then divorces her, and it just seems like a douchebaggy thing to do, and people are calling him that. But so here's the Trump 
so here's the Trump recent complaining on C. This is a CBS clip, Trump versus McLean, McCain. And I want to just at least remind people of where we stand on this because we have another clip, which I requested from Adam to play, which is the Pachenic roundup of John McCain, <laughs> who's just not the greatest guy in the world. So we're going to play the CBS clip first. Yeah, please. This is the this is the never ending. I don't know why Trump can't stop doing this, but he keeps doing it. President Trump today visited a tank factory and let loose with a long new volley against the late John McCain. Some fellow Republicans have taken note and are not pleased about a dispute that has only grown more bitter. Major Garrett has more on this. I've never liked them much. Hasn't been for me. In Ohio today, President Trump tried to explain the inexplicable, a running feud with revered Republican Senator John McCain, who has been dead for seven months. McCain didn't get the job done for our great vets. As if to justify the attacks that have rankled top Republicans, Mr. Trump repeatedly faulted McCain on policy. The other thing is we're in a war in the Middle East that McCain pushed so hard. When he finally had the chance to do it, he voted against repeal and replace. And this. And I gave him the kind of funeral that he wanted, which as president, I had to approve. I don't care about this. I didn't get thank you. Earlier in the day, McCain's daughter, Megan, a co-host of The View, said the attacks were bizarre. (laughs) He would think it was hilarious that our president was so jealous of him Mm -hmm. that he was dominating the news cycle in death as well. Top Senate Republicans came to McCain's defense today. Well, okay, I've I've looked at this at a distance. Yeah. But, But by the way. I'm, what did Trump mean when he says, I gave him a funeral that he wanted and I never got any thanks? Was he expecting thanks from McCain? Yeah. He's dead? Well, it's, <laughs> you know, Trump, Trump is doing, McCain? first of all, he's doing something that you don't do. As we discussed, when, when no matter how big of a douchebag you've been, when you die uh, in America, we all ultimately say, hey, man, thanks for being part of the American experience. Even though you're a douchebag, you dickhead, it, kind of everybody gets that, except, you know, if you really were some egregious, you know, very obvious type of horrible person. And McCain, um, he did a couple of things that really irked Trump to an, a very uh, large degree. One is, he, as we, I think we knew kind of in the beginning, he was the first, his office at least, was the first to start distributing the Steele dossier uh, the you know the PP stuff and the hookers and all that and the compromat so he he really started that that's annoying then he he really screwed up the healthcare deal I'm not saying that that wouldn't have been a great deal but this but he screwed it up by voting down on the uh, repeal and replace of Obamacare he was the final holdout trying to be some kind of hero towards uh, uh, towards everybody else. And, you know, Trump is trying to point out, I think, something which is futile, because, again, when it, it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, Nixon, Reagan, it, it, everybody, when they die, is like, oh, thanks, man. We don't disparage the dead. There's just something about it. And maybe it's because all he hears all day is Meghan McCain doing this. My father, 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 exists because of my father my father my father my father I, mean, my father, I have three minutes father, of this it's just my father my father my father my father but if you ask any military person who is old enough um they will say they do not like john mccain and so i don't know if this is trump also virtue signaling towards uh, towards the military but it is and as you requested john it's four minutes so it's not short but i think it is worthwhile playing uh dr steve pachenik's take on uh, McCain, uh, and Pachenik has a lot of extensive experience in uh, in military. Hello, 
I'm Dr. Pichenik. Today I want to talk to you about how false heroes are created in the name of honor and grandeur for our country. In particular, I'm talking about John McCain, who's unfortunately dying, but uh, he had a history which really put a black mark on him in our American experience of Vietnam. And let me tell you what I think. I've never liked John McCain. I knew a lot about his history. I knew that he was a spoiled, entitled brat at Indianapolis. His father was head of St. Pac. His grandfather was a famous admiral. In turn, he was one of the lowest men in a class of 899 people at Annapolis. He should have been thrown out, but his father kept him in. His flying experience was erratic and dangerous. He crashed several planes and then crashed on the USS Forrestal, killing several Americans. What he he is known for, though, is for having been shot down in a 29th bombing mission over Vietnam. Uh, he claims he was tortured and has fractured his hands and his face. That's not correct. He destroyed his arms and his face on the ejection. However, what happened in the, as a POW is the case in point. I know several of the POWs who were in the Hanoi Hilton with him, and they found him despicable. They found him to be a coward, a traitor, and the fact that he refused to be released because it was considered bravery was nonsense. The reason he could not leave uh, the prison in Vietnam was the simple fact that he would defy military order and would have been arrested for what he had done as a criminal, as a POW. In fact, the rest, the remaining part of his life is quite despicable and disgraceful. He was involved in the <coughs> SNL scandals and Keating. Oh, yeah. He was corrupt, and he never had to go to prison for that. Then subsequently, he closed all of the POW records so nobody would know what kind of a treasonous individual he was. And then, very much like any sociopath, he decided that the best things to do for America is to go to war any war and all wars. So he invited the Iraq war, the war in Syria, the war in Libya, and the war in Somalia, Sudan, and everywhere else. In fact, he killed more Americans than any other president I would have known of, even more than of George W. Bush. Now, who testified for his veracity and the fact that he is going to be a new hero? The man who testified on his behalf is none other than another coward and treasonous military officer other than David Petraeus. Let me tell you about General David Petraeus, a man who lived right next to West Point, married the commandant's daughter. He was a very ambitious little man, received all kinds of accolades as a very smart individual, went to Princeton and forced his supervisor to give him a PhD in less than a year and a half. But what was it that made David Petraeus great? It was David Petraeus. He never really had been in combat and, in fact, awarded himself some combat medals, which a lot of military officers said, we don't understand how we received it. More importantly, David Petraeus was caught for a major felony in a criminal act, passing over five notebooks with top secret information to a woman whom he seduced while he was director of the CIA. Normally, he would have been in prison for that for 10 to 15 years, but he got a little slap on his hand. So it's not an accident that David Petraeus agrees that John McCain, another coward and traitor, is a great man. Then the third man we're talking about is Bob Carey. Most of you don't know very much about him. He's a Democrat. He was a pharmacy student and came out of Nebraska. He did join the SEALs. He did go into Vietnam and he was injured in Vietnam and received the Congressional Medal of Honor. He knew he should not have received the Congressional Medal of Honor because unfortunately his foot was shot off and he knew it was just a, a accident in war. He hadn't done anything that was particularly heroic. He said it to his present days. He said, I don't deserve it. At the same time, he received the Bronze Star for having killed 22 innocent men, women and children. So what's the moral of the story? John McCain doesn't ride any higher than Trump, who refused to serve in our Vietnam War. But those who excuse themselves accuse themselves of treachery. In French, we say, qui s'excuse s'accuse. And let me repeat one thing Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a brave man is an ordinary man who's only brave for five minutes more. Thank you, good night, and good luck. Well, we got a little more than we bargained for there. But... 
Uh, that I believe that to be a pretty accurate. I think he has some of his facts maybe a little bit off about crashing on the ship or blowing up on the ship. That's kind of irrelevant. But no, I think Trump is really irked about McCain, who was hated, absolutely hated by the Democrats until Trump came along. And then and then McCain took it. He took it and ran with it right to the grave to go down as a hero. And that Trump can't stand it. But it's a very bad tree to be barking up, if you ask me. It just looks like shit because people don't understand this background. And they never will. It will never it will never be the the common truth. You just no, like I, I will. Agree. I will always be you know, an ex VJ. It's like these things you, you give up on it, Trumpy. You just give up on it. It makes you yeah, look really petty. Him, but I thought we should set the record straight. I agree. I don't like to uh, talk ill of the dead, but I'm not talking ill of the dead. It's Pachenik. Yeah. And telling it like it is is what it amounts to. And so there you go. But yeah, that my dad clip was uh, was quite revealing. <laughs> yeah, that's her whole career. My father, my father, my father, my father, my father, this, my father, that, my father, this, my father, that. Yep. Yeah, they should get rid of her, but they won't. No, they shouldn't get rid of her. I don't know. Let me see. I have a. I don't know if we need any real follow up on the seven three seven Max. Uh, there's a good note from Captain Jack in the show notes if you want to take a look at that. But we, you know, we pretty much. I think we're pretty much. On yeah, we track. got. A, I got a note from one of the pilots who. Uh, I want to read this. It's short. Yeah, he's the one that pointed me over toward the. He says, I've been listening to, uh, this is the right note. Oh, yeah, okay. I've been listening to the cover, of the, you covered the show and thought I could offer some assistance. First off, the MCAS make maneuver characteristic augmentation system does not reference the, the pedo static system. It looks AOA angle of attack. Currently, it only looks at the signal from one of the two AOA sensors installed. But the upcoming software version will look at both signals and should greatly reduce the likelihood of a false MA, MCAS activation. Secondly, MCAS does not push the nose of the aircraft down. When MCAS is activated, it trims the aircraft nose down. I think the distinction is important because despite what the president may believe, the 740, 737 MAX is relatively simple aircraft for an airliner, and pilots have always had the last authority to control the aircraft. Although I do believe Boeing should have included the MCAS in all its training materials from the get-go, does not exclude the pilots of either aircraft not being able to resolve these problems. Runaway trim is a simple procedure that should be trained during initial on any aircraft with electric trim. It was my it was at my current airline and my previous employers as well. I am unfamiliar with the Lion Air or Ethiopian training procedures, but from the results, they appear to be inadequate, to say the least. Out of seven pilots, only one knew what to do, knew what to do, including the previous Lion Air flight. I have other thoughts, but I don't want to just keep rambling. Let me know if you have any questions. He goes, uh, yeah. he's, he works for a Southwest. Yeah, the so Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System is MCAST. So it's, a, yeah. it's, it's like a keep, a keep in your lane, a lane assist for an aircraft. But if you don't know what's going on, you don't know how to disable it if you have to. Uh, but ultimately, pilots will get blamed for this, and I think poor training is at hand, and Boeing certainly had a lot of other issues such as profitability up front other than having retraining going out all in all very sad day also of course got the expected angry emails from software developers when i said this is a a perfect example of uh artificial intelligence gone wrong Uh, and i put very large loose descriptors around artificial intelligence to me it's an if then script skip logic (laughs) almost if then skip logic yeah um, no, I don't think software developers are to blame. But yes, a program manager within Boeing said, ah, well, screw it, we'll just have this fix it, and don't worry about it, we'll put it in the manual, and it'll, it'll everything work will be fine. Okay. It'll work fine. It is, an, it is a level of arrogance um, at somewhere down the line. So anyway, it's sad. But, uh, you know, you don't hear about 100, you know, what, 1,000 people almost killed in a cyclone, no one gives a shit about them. What else came up today? Um, 130 dead in Mali. We don't care. But brown and black people, we don't need to put that on the news. No one cares. Ethnic attack. You know, where's all the coverage? No. There's your racism right there. 
No one gives a shit. Or do they? They want those votes. Yeah, exactly. They just want the votes. Uh, just some leftover OTG stuff. Facebook. This is really strange. For someone, you know, a company that's completely all in on protecting your shit. They stored their passwords in in plain text. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. I, I didn't expect that from Facebook. Chinese. Well, here's another thing that's. As far as Facebook's concerned, there's an article that ran in, of all places, boing, boing. I think it must be getting out. But last week, uh, this guy in Lithuania pled guilty in the U.S. of wire fraud, aggrieved identity theft, and money laundering charges, admitting that he had stolen $99 million mm. from Facebook and $23 million from Google between 2013 and 2015. And all he was doing was sending in just random invoices. <laughs> and, and getting them paid? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. We should try Apparently that ourselves. <laughs> they just didn't pay any attention to the, any, with the, with the PO or, you know, numbers and purchase order <laughs> numbers and all the rest. And nobody had double check. They just kept sending him checks to the tune over $120 million. That's fan. Why didn't, th- our exit strategy. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we should have thought of this one. Yeah. Slam well. dunk. Slam dunk. Who knew these companies were that dumb? All right, everybody. I'm off to uh, hit the bottle of NyQuil and, uh, you know, start resting up for our Sunday show because it'll probably take a few days to get over whatever the hell this virus is. Thanks, kids. It's the cruds. Yeah, it's whatever it is. It's nasty. I've been sitting down almost the whole show. Normally, I stand up. I'm weak. Hmm. Special thanks to Jesse Coy Nelson, Aaron Yoho, Tom Starkweather, and Lee O. LaPute for our end of show mixes. We love them. We love you sending them in. And remember that we have another show on Sunday. You can support us at Dvorak.org slash NA. Coming to you from downtown Austin, Texas, capital of the Drone Star State, in the 5x9 Cludio in the Common Law Condo. We're in FEMA region number six on the governmental maps in the morning, everybody. I'm Adam Curry. And from Northern Silicon Valley, I'm John C. Dvorak. We return on Sunday right here with another episode of the best podcast in the universe. Until then, adios, mofos, and such. He shakes our nerves and he rattles our brains. Too much of carbon drives us all insane. We'll be submerged, but that's absurd. Goodness gracious, Al Gore's a liar. A carbon tax, and he thought it was funny. He came along because he wanted our money. Get in line, just pay the fine. Goodness gracious, Al Gore's a liar. Twelve years, baby. Ooh, all screwed. Cap and trade. Ooh. You're gonna pay it like a good slave should. It's time to be fined. Maybe global warming, we're gonna die, die, die. 400,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every 24 hours, 365 days a year. Oh, yeah. We'll see you on the other Sunday, which is Thursday, I think. I think that's what's gonna be a safety boat. Oh, or a safety boat. You're going to call it the safety vote. I got a couple renaming I, I like this. I like safety vote. That sounds good. A safety vote safety would be one vote. way to but they already have it dubbed the people's vote. I think a safety vote would be good. It also uh, dehumanizes everybody. From people's vote to safety vote. It takes away yeah, the we key word. Sure we don't want to hurt anyone. <laughs> it takes away. Well, we also want to make sure people don't think that it's actually their vote. It's not from the people. It's for safety. Uh, Muller. 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 Uh, Muller. 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 Now it's Muller time. So we need to get the full information. No collusion. Now we can relax. President Trump. The seismic shift in the Russia investigation. The real.
fight is just beginning. The way I look at it, this is the end of the beginning. The uh, beginning of the end, this is just the end of the beginning. This is the start of something, apparently, not the end of something. Uh, Mueller. 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 That report needs to be made public. The Mueller report needs to be released in its entirety. I hope every word, every sentence, every paragraph of this report is released to the American people. Full report public. Let it come out. Let people see it. That's up to the attorney general. Nearly two years investigation into whether President Trump or anyone in his inner circle now in the hands of the new Attorney General, William Barr. Mueller has finally been submitted. Uh, Mueller. 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 My name is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You notice that when she she introduces herself, does she take on that Obama, you know, she Obama does, put on accent? She does the Latina thing where she does her, you know, Anastasio Ocasio-Cortez. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez loves to throw out the, the accent when talking about herself. Ocasio-Cortez. Fox News likes to say my name incorrectly. Examine why something as small as a person's name makes me uncomfortable in the first place. This is an outrage. And it uh, turns out the people at Gravian, they went and they did a check on uh, Fox News. And they could find no examples of Fox News referring to her as Cortez. So I'm a victim. They don't call me by my right name. What's your name? Alexandria What's your name? Ocasio Cortez. Hannity keeps calling me Cortez. I'm not a conquistador. You are a destroyer of worlds. I don't care. I don't care. It's fine with me. Now it's Mueller time. The best podcast in the universe. Mopo. Dvorak.org slash N-A. That's true.